हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स एम आई ऑडिबल टू यू यस सर ओके हेलो सर गुड इवनिंग सर आई है गुड इवनिंग सर आई गुड इवनिंग So I think a lot of our colleagues are here joining. Okay, so we can wait for few minutes. hello friends once again a very good evening to all participants friends okay we are into a uh, 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 day 3 of our program last day of our program so as you are aware uh, like what we had done yesterday before we start this session for today so 
can we have a small quick recap what we covered yesterday i hope uh, i have covered the content i shared the content for tomorrow also for yesterday i suppose sorry yeah so anybody who can have a big quick recap what we covered anybody Sir, we discussed about. Yeah. Uh, hello, good evening. Good evening. Uh, yeah, we discussed about the aspects of project, the business case, um, the contents of project characters, then the the stakeholder uh, priority. The uh, we discussed about the uh, the need of uh, the priority of the stakeholders, also a delegation of uh, power in the project. Like different stages, we dis discuss the PM, then the project coordination and team leader. Okay. Then uh, team, uh, team, team work, team performance. We had discussed yesterday. Then the uh, three three different uh, financial uh, planning. One was the payback period. Second was I think so. Uh, DCF we discussed the, the okay, cash flow. Thank you. Okay. Uh, great. Thank the you, project uh, project Sajinji. requirement yeah, anybody else thank you sachinji anybody else who can take forward what else we covered other than sachinji has almost covered a few more things also we covered yesterday anybody else so we discussed about project charter yes ma'am yeah perfect okay project charter okay Rest, I think Sachin has covered most of the things. Most of the things. Okay. I think we, we also discussed about precise role and responsibility we, of the PM. Uh, we, yes, sir, we covered the role and responsibility of PM and also how team foundation and Tuckman uh, model. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Navneet ji. Okay, Nagin ji, Vipan, Sachin sir. Okay, well covered. Very well covered, comprehensively. So with that background, friends, let's push ahead ourselves and uh, go ahead with the agenda for today. Okay, let me open the presentation. I suppose we touched base uh, yesterday. We started about the team, team performance, formation of the team. There are various stages through which the team formation goes on. Okay, technical model we discussed. So uh, we will go ahead and, uh, and, and understand, try to understand something more about the team. And then from there, we, have, we will we'll enter into uh, another aspect of today. So let me open the presentation. Give me one second. Sir, so just a gentle reminder about that uh, Agile and Scrum. We oh, yeah, yeah. I remember very well, ma'am. Thank so you, sir. I'm, I'm ready with you. No issue. Thank you. So whatever time we have, definitely my pleasure at least to touch base and to appraise all the participants as to how this technique, how this technology, our aspect of uh, Agile, how they can make, make up, bring up, uh, we can say make, uh, bring about a major change into project management as well. Yeah. Okay. So on uh, public demand, definitely uh, we will, we'll discuss on that. Okay. At least touch basing on the prospect. Very interesting. Okay. So let me share the presentation friends. I hope all of you can see the slide. Okay, this is what we have already covered yesterday. So, yeah, what team management is all about. Okay, what is the team? So, for us, for for a, my for my project, so the this is absolutely essential to have very highly performing team, cohesive also team who would like to have the same feeling and they share. They would like they share the same aim, same theme, same objective for the success of the project. Okay. This is what we have covered, the team formation stages, Takman model. I'm just passing through. Okay, fine. From here, friends, uh, uh, well, let's go ahead. As I just, uh, referred yesterday, wherever there is a situation of some, some conflict is there, okay? Some conflict, maybe it's of smaller scale, meager scale also. So as a PM, um, how we have to deal with that? So, what are the techniques of team uh, conflict resolution also? Again, there are well-known, they are well-known team. Uh, uh, techniques for you. So just to uh, give you, um, uh, you can say a role 
as what PM has to perform at different stages. Okay, different stages depending on the you can say um, the the seriousness of the conflict as such. Right. So there are uh, um, five uh, established methods, five main methods to resolve the conflict. As you can see, this could be called as a withdrawal uh, method, technique, smoothing technique, compromising method. Okay, or tool, forcing and confrontation also so as and when we go ahead i suppose we may not be required to go at the advanced stage of conflict resolution but if time comes okay if we are required to involve ourselves dip ourselves into that what could be my my strategy what could be my role as a pm let us start to understand that okay so first withdrawal so very very initial stage of any conflict okay very meager level you can say very meager level, right so at this stage i suppose you need to retreat or very simple technique is what to do is not to do anything. Okay, so you have to retreat or withdraw from the actual or potential any conflict, any disagreement within within the team. Okay, it's better to retreat yourself. No action to be taken. Surprisingly, friend, but having uh, having uh, to maintain this calmness to maintain, you can say independent. Okay, that that will also help. That's why uh, no action to be taken by disagreement okay does not solve the problem that there may not be any problem immediately to be resolved but you can use this method as an pm for conflict over a trivial issues very trivial issues friend. okay so as to lessen the tension or when resolving uh, the conflict could increase the image if you involve more there could be possibility fear that it will enhance the it will it will uh, put into more dimension of the problem also so better not to take any extra at all that could be resolved there itself, okay, automatically also. Withdrawal method, withdrawal technique. Then smoothing, okay, smoothing technique, slightly we, we go ahead and slightly it could be, a, a, you can say, a more serious issue. So where you need to emphasize the area of agreement more. So you have to concentrate more on the agreement areas, areas of agreement and play down the areas of disagreement. What your disagreement could be there because what has seen the leaders, project managers, they will concentrate more on the areas of disagreement friends. That is not required. So you try to emphasize your more attention on the agreement and play down the areas of agreement. Okay. Give less importance to the areas of conflict. Try to keep that at a bay, at a distance. Okay. Try to avoid the areas of conflict. Okay. How, how it will help? Definitely. I, I have also experienced keep the atmosphere friendly and with less stress less stressful in, in, in the entire team, okay? But again, that may not be an automatic solution. That may not solve the problem immediately. But at that point of time, just emphasizing on the area of positive areas definitely will help. Okay, so you can use this method to encourage a team member and help him or her to grow by learning from own experience. Whatever good thing he are doing, fine. Okay, you can encourage. Whatever thing with which uh, he is not doing as per expected, and that's okay. So you can see, fine. Uh, you 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 should go by your own experiences, learn yourself, and grow or come up with your own expectation. That's all. Experiences, right? Nothing more. Nothing more. Smoothing. That's it. Let's go ahead. Compromising. A very tactful method, I would say. Very very tactful method as far as the conflict resolution is concerned. Okay. So somewhere this this method is. <coughs> Also called as the approach of give and take attitude. Okay, so uh, slightly, uh, we can say slightly higher volume, okay, volume of the issue. So both the parties need to make some trade-offs. You should see that every party, either party, they need to compromise somewhere, trade-off. Okay, so that they will have a feeling that neither party can win. Okay, there are no winners at all. We don't expect also, right? So it gives a satisfaction. This method will help to satisfy to each concerned party have that feeling have that feeling but not an ideal solution but that point of time this is this is essential okay so just have a compromise between the parties uh, uh you can say conflicting parties this is sufficient so you can use this method to resolve a conflict in team temporarily to avoid this because what is important for me is to not to give further dimension that's it i need to uh, continue with the work, with the performance, that's it. That is that is my requirement at that point of time. Okay, so even temporarily solving the issue, okay, or maybe uh, you can say a resolution could be definitely sufficient. 
okay to avoid delays in the work what we are concerned friends more is that my work should not be delayed it should go on push on okay or making some concession by negotiation for contract that's it okay make some concessions some compromise that's it the work will go on okay this is called compromising up to this level is okay but suppose um uh, uh the, the the situation goes more worse entities are slightly of higher volume of conflict then what you need to do so i think uh last two techniques okay you may not be required to use but you should be prepared if at all the situation goes to that level let's go and understand forcing okay the term itself is absolutely a self-explanatory you may have to force so you have to you may have to use the authority or exert one's viewpoint at the potential expense of another okay so you have to exert the the the, the right viewpoint at the potential expense of, so you have to downplay okay downplay the potential expense of the other you have to exert one's viewpoint which is more strong so you have to use powers your authority okay to force the problem so somewhere you are forcing the problem which is required that point of view so your more in more serious deep involvement is required there you can do this should be used as a last is of press so a point of caution so when you will be using not every day okay not not a smaller issue but yes forcing uh, as a technique of resolution should be used as a last resort as ill feelings are likely to return so there's a fear that it, the, the the solution may bounce back bounce back also this can return as a problem further problem so use it very very carefully as such. so you can use this method of forcing for quick decisions of course you have to take a very quick decision so here you cannot keep on uh keep on putting the uh, temporary solution as such. so you need a quick decision and permanent solution also it's very very crucial very important or urgent situation also or when he wants a specific solution urgent specific and timely solution we need to apply forcing method also because you as an authority you know it very well where is the pin point where is the pain point where is the pain area right you have to apply for this and last one confrontation again uh, this should be a, a, at a very you can say very rare cases where you have to confront actual problem solving is in solution so you have to solve the problem you are you are forced or other you are there's under you are under compulsion to confront yourself okay so here the issue is kept as focus the situation or conflict has reached to such a level okay because issue is very 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 uh, very serious <coughs> sorry so affected party try to resolve their disagreement the party who has been affected they would try to resolve their disagreement by directly facing the conflict okay so those who are under disagreement may face the show also may face the uh, 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 repercussion also isn't it so they may be required to face the conflict is very direct most direct most focused object most focused and objective based on object, objective based approach which would pinpoint the problem okay specifically you pinpoint identify and have a problem solving at first go one go it will provide a final search please remember this okay it has to you you confront in, uh, with the disagreement parties in such a way it should give final solution of the country if you don't resolve friends that may hamper this may impact okay on the outcome of the pro of the project okay that's why you should be very careful if it is required definitely you need to confront okay problems so you should use confrontation method when team is mature they'll understand that if you don't perform okay we have to face the show we have to face the repercussion implication of this that's why if the team is really mature even though you are confronting they'll understand why uh, the, the the project manager is, is required to confront have of such word harsh words also confrontation may require you to use harsh word also okay because problem solving is the is, is, is a need at that hour okay so this is what a five well-known technical friend you may remember uh i suppose uh, i have used uh, uh the first techniques okay very commonly but very 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 rarely i am i was required to use the last two techniques but at that situation what is the situation what is the seriousness of the situation of resolution of the conflict any what are the conflict is okay let's go ahead friends so we come to uh, another impact a very uh, important aspect again we have been discussing about the scope and deliverable what is scope and scope management friend let's understand 
so as we have already understood what is scope scope defines make you understand the total work required to be done so what your total work okay the, the the host of deliverables for what we have so as to execute and come accomplish the project also the project methodology or the manner or the technology okay your own techniques okay and also constant fact in this way what could be the possible constant factors coming in way coming in way okay so with which the project has to perform any you have to perform you have to go ahead also okay so as a project manager and team should have a very clear understanding of the scope because okay? as we have discussed that it has two aspects to understand very clearly the product or the services ultimately what we need to deliver what we need to come out as an output outcome of the project and the methodology or the work okay the type of work nature of work nature of methodology nature of manner or your own skill special skill set which is required to be done for successful delivery of the product or service okay this is all simple uh, which will will uh, will define the scope management also so what should be your scope statement friends okay when we come out with, with your with your mission scope statement this is a very detailed and chronological description of the chronological friends okay so as timely solution as per the as as the time flows time goes on right this is a chronological description of the work required to be done to deliver the project product and service of so of course uh, this scope statement is well built in built uh, within your business case friends so this will strategize yourself it okay it will show the strategizing putting the strategy of your own in what best way best possible way to go ahead and what is the manner in which you would like to lead the project okay that's what would be a scope statement so this what this how we do firstly um, uh, initially friend as a planning process um, we get into the bank, macro level planning broadly okay done then then thereafter it is followed by the micro level detail planning done this could be in the form of your pmp okay project management plan project monitoring plan what we discussed yesterday okay so micro level planning would come at a later stage okay which would define uh, your scope clearly in the form of your actionable plan okay so this should be this statement should have an agreement for understanding between your team and the customer also okay so your scope, scope statement is a very clear and transparent statement okay that this is what i we would like to do with me with my team this is my philosophy and should be known to the customer if required sometimes the customer may, may be interested to know okay how come you 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 can perform this so quick so quick so you must produce before them as to what is going to be your strategy and the the methodology what you are going to use okay let's go ahead okay so this is what how we design the your scope management plan or maybe scope management plan is a is a uh, clear deliverable or you can technique within the pmp pmp also. okay this describes the various steps okay various steps needed to manage the project scope and the changes if required okay in the meanwhile uh, 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 midway some changes are required that will show the changes also how the total scope will be managed and controlled by you okay how in what how, what best way you are putting the tab of control tab okay on on the activities of your project so you need to identify define what we have discussed of, of course within the scope management plan okay uh, um, without fail you need to uh, develop and incorporate the wbs also wbs would be one of the methodologies of scope management plan okay now two uh, terms friends very interestingly which are which are very commonly used but uh, that may not be coming in your way but you should be knowing okay what what is known by what is what is uh, understood by the two concept okay one first is scope creep i may i put it into red lines friend into red uh, uh, color you'll understand what is scope creep this is something uh, uncontrolled changes in the scope on our objective uncontrolled changes what does that mean friends uncontrolled without any proper approval or without getting a corresponding increase in the time sudden change in the scope sudden change what you are going to, and you are changing the direction suddenly right so this could be uncontrolled unplanned and uh, having any without any authority for it uncontrolled change this could be uh, could lead into increase in the time or budget also but uncontrolled unplanned this is something called a scope creep so of course out of the best of your abilities you should not have any scope you should not have any element called a scope creep 
but sometimes some uh, uh, some organization they may go for it also but right? but that's what uh, we mean by scope creep another term which is called a gold plating these also come within the scope friends what is gold plating again um uh, uh, uh you, in a normal course in a normal flow of your activities there should not be any scope for gold plating should not be any element of gold plating what we mean what we mean by a gold plating friend where somewhere we try to deliver more scope more output than what was agreed upon so whatever we are designed whatever we are conceptualized and whatever we have planned over and above that if you try to deliver okay our actionable are such that okay if we if if i want to deliver x if you try to deliver 10x okay that would be for what purpose that would be done okay in order to please the customer okay is something called as gold plating of course i mentioned the implication also so if at all you somebody uh, attempts to do that it may enhance the risk it may also uh, uh, bring about uncertainty and of course problem it may inject some some serious problem also so uh, in within our project firm there should not be any element called a scope creep and gold plating also but it is quite uh, 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 you can say quite usually used the term okay whenever it is required right so there is no scope that is somebody is asking for x so you, there is no there is no uh, there is no uh, reason why you should go for 10x or 5x or something about a gold plating okay so if at all somebody is doing you should be prepared for the the the, the, the possible risk maybe uh, the uh, the stage of uncertainty of the project also okay and we should some people will require to face the show face the problem also so this is what about broadly about scope management and uh, <clears throat> the these two terms specific scope creep what we understand and code plating okay let us go ahead coming to time management friends so specifically of course time management is well known uh, element for us or for all of us but few uh, um, few actionables uh, uh, or you can say few planning for as far as the project is concerned okay we can, in the context of a project so how we we have what are the our actionables okay how we manage the time so you, you there are some very broad actionables i put here so you have to plan the schedule management okay what are the schedules you have what are the broad schedule and then again uh, to to get into the uh, um, more detailed schedule of each activity define the activities so every stage major stage milestone stage what are the what are the specific activities one two three four ten activities with these activities we will we will in disintegrate and integrate the project again so for every stage major stage you define the activity list of the activity not only defining you have to sequence the activity also sequencing nothing but in in the order of priorities which followed by which one okay so first of all initially which is to be taken up okay as in priority followed by that what could be the sequence of other other activities it should, should be very properly and scientifically arranged resource estimate so within the time management friends uh, no need to explain much but yes we need to look at the estimated resources planned resources planned expenditure for each stage also so we must have a well gelling combination of the estimate with your time zone or timelines also so time estimation for each one lo uh, looking at the resource and then develop a schedule this developing the schedule will be uh, overall schedule friends for the project for the project okay so we we are aware that within how much time uh, or how much on the schedule time has been given for us overall time for the project okay yeah that you have to define then depending on the overall broad framework of the time given you can then estimate the time assigned to be assigned to each of the activities there could be there could be a, a, a time required less okay you can do it in the lesser lesser time some activity for some activity depending on um, the, the the criticality and um, the, the the volume of work you may require additional time also that you can adjust you can estimate but at any point of time you should see that overall time schedule okay doesn't go beyond the assigned time okay there may not be uh, any any possible element of time overrun okay possibly right yeah, ideally yes that's how hello yeah so broadly i have given given the small uh, template also how you have to uh, uh, prepare the schedule based line any activity maybe a uh, activity or sub activity you must have the plan started and ended also with how much time 
okay what what is the estimated time for each activity when i can start and when possibly i can finish the job or activity also okay this what broadly you have to bring it out okay friends if when if when we are talking about the time management as such there is one of another another well known technique okay a well known technique very well known technique in project management which is called as cpm critical path method critical path method we have we have been talking broadly about the about the scheduling or you deciding the the time uh, frame of that there is a, a very interesting part uh, which you need to understand this is called a critical path method so critical path method is also a, a technique of schedulement of your project project scheduling method methodology which will help you to determine okay which will help you to, to determine as to about early, something called early state and early finish or sometime late state and late start and late finish of course cpm is applicable to the individual task i have mentioned here okay cpm is not applicable for the overall project friends so you wherein you need to break up the the project activities for each activity you can you can think of you can think you can estimate and determine any activity whether i can start early so that i can uh, uh, finish early and so on okay so this is what is cpm is all about so this is a, a, a completing a project in time is one of the different objective overall project right overall project timelines are there and expected of the customer stakeholder also but under cpm will give you some scope will give you some, some further scope to prepare the optimized project schedule opt, or most optimized project schedule okay so those um, under cpm what could be strategy friends so again based on my own experience okay i have, I have put some study possible strategy which could be deployed for you so you can explore okay whether i can go for such study also first um, determine the minimum time in which the project can be completed overall if at all you can firstly you can have your own expert estimate that okay i have given i have been given 90 days so can, is will it be possible if i can finish in say, 85 days or 88 days if possible right you need to determine overall then if we if you if you are concerned that okay fine this there could be possibility of early uh, early finishing or early completion of the project then determine the sequence of activity then going down look at such activities or sequential activities which may be completed on time in order to complete the project in time okay so your individual assignment of time given to individual task okay taking taking a form of the overall project also again within that uh, you have to determine look at the some activities some task friends which can be possibly delayed okay which you can take a decision that yes this activity this task can be possibly delayed also i don't find this task has a very high priority okay but that delay just as a precaution that should not delay the project completion time okay look at the smaller activities minor activities which may be which could be delayed also for some tasks determine the early and late start of task which can be early start and late start also right so based on that <clears throat> your overall schedule will be ready track the project progress so based on the time assigned communicate it with your team also then based on that <coughs> you can track you can take a tab monitor the progress of the project <coughs> with in with regard to the agreed timeline and taking a proactive correct if at all required okay so there are timelines which are agreed by you and team also taking proactive action corrective action if if somewhere okay we find that project could be getting delayed so you take a sig you have a signal okay you have a signal some point of time okay so proactive immediate action should be taken corrective action should be taken so that overall project doesn't get delayed also okay so that's why cpm will help you this is a tool which would determine the earliest possible date completion date of the project okay so this would be uh, one of the one of the key techniques you need to look at it okay don't, don't just look at it okay fine 90 days given so we will 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 do it in 90 days instead of that have application uh, apply your own mind own skill okay and and just determine some activities which could could be come under the cpm critical path method okay this something called a cpm so this uh, is all some actionable sir, sir, yeah. sorry to interrupt yeah so uh, is cpm a logical part of the 
product manager thinking or it's it's a kind of some not tool. only logical sir it has some basis so you are aware so you know the task isn't it suppose the project yes. is of overall project it involves some 10 sub tasks okay right? so for each task and sub task you are aware that okay this activity if i look at can i delay at the cost of other activity which is more important which is more critical which i need to start and if possible i can, I can finish it early and thereafter i can take up the Mine activity which is which carries a minor priority, yes, small priority, low priority. Yes, that you need to determine if scope is there. I'm not saying that this may happen uh, uh, on a regular basis, okay. but sometimes I've I done that. Okay, okay. You, so you need to determine and understand that okay, how far this activity is urgent at this point of time. If not, then can I delay this and I take and uh, I give scope for another activity which is more important, which would save your time subsequently that's what you have to see this may not work sir. i'm just putting a toolkit put before you if it applies okay. or if it works fine for you this okay. may not be possible always uh, on the other hand uh, as i said yesterday also there could be possibility somewhere uh, you find that okay overall i'm going well but somewhere you you sense that this activity may require more time than what i estimated or yes may yeah. have impact of overall project time also project schedule also fine i had committed we have worked it out but there are certain situations where um, the project could be delayed by a few days okay instead of 90 days so if this may exceed 95 days or 100 days also in that case please come out very proactively find out the reason where which are the which are which is situation which would be maybe beyond your control okay uninterrupted changes certain situation which has come up cropped up yes. which wherein you need to have a corrective action get the extra allowance of time get it approved okay put out the reason and then with that with that approval with that uh, uh, extra allowance maybe some funds could be required additionally with that then you can go ahead and then complete in a revised time schedule also maybe required i know this practice this happens sometimes but there could be should be a valid reason to justify to the management to the stakeholder to put up and this needs to be done at appropriately appropriately uh, uh, before time Okay, so when you when you sense that okay, somewhere I could sense I could see that this may be delayed. So this also uh, we can say uh, some portion of the CPM only. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's what I mentioned. So to have regular reviews with the team on project success, documentation process very very important. Whenever you need that, okay, this is. The start date and the finish date, finish date is absolutely matching. You need to record that. You need to have an output. Of course, as I mentioned, for all possible project friend, okay, there could be timer, time, a uh, time analyzer or any software definitely would be available. You need to maintain that, okay, maintain that scheduling software to have a tab control on the activity as per the time lenses. Okay, let's go ahead. Okay, now we come to a monitoring part first. So not only we need to fix up the time, but also we should have some techniques. There are some well-known techniques, friends, okay, which would help you to monitor at the right time, appropriate time also. So we are going to discuss certain well-known techniques, monitoring techniques also. They are very well-known, which are which are uh, very commonly followed also in most of the activities. So let's look, have a look at uh, the few uh, techniques, uh, which are very simple, but we will be uh, discussing few. Uh, not complex, but uh, detailed uh, uh, monitoring tool also will be discussing. Okay, we'll start with the Gantt chart. I think many of you must be knowing Gantt chart or bar chart is one of the simple to understand and very commonly followed to give you uh, to give the feel that okay whether my activity is going on well as per schedule or whether it is going out so outside the schedule that will give you. So okay, so this is something called a Gantt chart or bar chart. So as you can see, friends, very easy to draw and understand and I can say analyze also. So on one hand, one hand you can you can list out all the activities which have been given, which have been uh, broken down. Against that, you have a time scheduler, a scheduler. Okay, so here in this case, this has been drawn for a monthly basis, just for our simple understanding. So, friend, assuming that, uh, assume that uh, we we are in in the in the month of August today, August. Assuming that we are we are taking the review, okay, uh, at in August. So, what is the status it's showing? 
okay so you can see uh, uh, every individual activity which the visa is the period time frame given so as you can see friends by starting from jan and february uh, the the uh, the activity which has been given and allotted time okay so green chart as you can see these are the completed tasks all the individual tasks have been completed but when we look at the major activity of building as you can see the building activity which was supposed to uh, start okay so start in may and was to be completed in maybe some maybe august or september september let's see now you can see friends in the month of august okay we are we are derailing okay we are delaying so the performance says that um, the activity building activity which was to be continued in july and august has not been done isn't it we are yet to start we are yet to start the activity for july and july so you can you can see the to what extent this activity of course major activity friends amongst all the activities you can find that building activity is very very major activity so there itself we have faltered in terms of fulfilling the commitment committed time right so activity not only delayed for august but july itself so there is a delay time delay of times over and of almost two months so ultimately we are aware that this would be delayed so my commitment for september may not be fulfilled isn't it how far to what extent we can see in september so again uh, the management may ask for the review in the month of september again okay so you need to uh, be very close to the achievement by september or you need to ask for the allowance extra allowance additional amount uh, or you can say additional period extended period also okay so obviously you can see friends so you were you are supposed to finish the product by november end and you, you need to estimate if not ideally done to what extent uh, i would delay act my activity for the future okay for the further months for the period also okay so this is a gantt chart showing the project activities and your performance in a respective month okay let's go ahead slightly uh, uh, um, uh, a sub separate chart is called a bar chart is almost a, a similar like gantt chart so here i want to show that uh, your performance against uh, um, the task given okay on weekly basis you can see friends now supposing that uh, we are in week 5 assume the week week 5 okay very short project seven pro week project itself but still in that case also as you can see and you can see the task on the, on the left hand side so we started well started very well but again we got derailed okay so there is a lag time lag so design activity got delayed okay instead of completing week 2 it got extended to week 3 building simultaneously simultaneously we were supposed to start in week 3 okay it got delayed if we could start only at the fag end of week 3 okay so it has repercussion in week 4 it got delayed okay assuming that we are in week 5 week 5 so we need to complete our building and we are supposed to go for testing which we have not been done right we which are not done so we had planned for testing in the week okay this we are yet to start so my building activity itself got delayed up to week 5 instead of being completed in week 4 isn't it we started late that's why we could finish late a very clear indication okay so uh, here the words are not re uh, required friends without expressing words okay this this bar this chart is very simple and very very simple to draw understand also and to give you uh, other inferences the inferences are very very clear so it will give a feeling that when this could be closed can we close in a scheduled time of week seven weeks or this could be delayed okay a very clear indication bar chart okay one more slightly different friend but is a very very uh, one of the scientific tool which we normally use this is a bar chart but this is a link bar chart why link bar chart friends this because uh, one activity is not independent not in isolation okay so it has a linkage it has a dependency with another activity that's why we should be very very careful not only to go ahead with the activity but also to maintain that linkage dependency is one other activity but you can see unfortunately that linkage has been lost dependency has been lost we could not do it just have a look Look at the task. I am not. Uh, <coughs> I am not named that task. Task, but you can see week wise how we have fared, or how or how we could not fare. There has been delay right from first task, friends. Okay, first task because first task had a uh, um, uh, interdependency on task two, 
isn't it? Provided we could finish it in in the first week or uh, we can say slightly in second week, being of second week, which we could not do it. Our first task itself got delayed right up to second week, complete of second week. That's why the dependency is lost, right? So we can see the 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 the, the dependent work task, okay, which was supposed to start in second week, some somewhere we could start in beginning beginning of third week. So third week got delayed up to uh, week four. You can see the very clearly mentioned task number three. When when we were supposed to start third week, having closed uh, dependencies, okay, so we could do it in fifth week. Likewise, right? Similarly, another activity uh, which are which are not which are independent. Simultaneously, we started okay uh, in first week. Okay, look at task number four. We started there, right? We could start very promptly, but look at the outcome. Look at the outcome. Okay, to what extent this got prolonged? This got extended not up to four, but almost mid of fifth week. So as you can see, friends, overall, overall, there's an impact on the project. Overall, there's an impact on the project, right? So if we are into week five, just look at uh, uh, our performance in week five or week six, sorry, week five. Okay, so every very either uh, dedicated activity or you can say uh, 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 dependent activity, both are going to be got So it has a very serious repercussion on your performance as well as the performance of the project at appropriate time wherever we are we are taking a review okay so this is what is chart where we find that okay there are simultaneous tasks going on and one task has dependency on another task linked task we need to be more careful in maintaining the linkage and maintaining the schedule which in this case has not been done. I just don't want to put up just very, very ideal uh, uh, performance before you. So this is the way it, it performs. Small project of not more than nine weeks, but still this has hampered the, the timelines. Okay. Like so similarly, this is this have very serious repercussion on the cost also. <clears throat> Let's go ahead, friends. Uh, as my friend has indicated, thank you so much. So that's what I have also incorporated. One of one of the very powerful uh, evaluation tool friends. As you must be know, you many of you must be knowing also PERT chart. PERT chart. Program evaluation and review technique. Again, happens to be a very commonly followed technique, okay, in many, many projects also. So this is where we uh, we try to evaluate the our activity against the time, estimated time. Okay, because used for time and cost estimating when it is difficult to arrive at an estimate due to lack of knowledge or experience. So we need to uh, use this specific time estimate. Okay, so uh, there is a uh, there is a, uh, a term okay which which you need to understand uh, which which are called optimistic uh, uh, extent and pessimistic, optimistic and pessimistic. As the term indicates, friends. So there is a, there is a given time. There's given time. Say for example, given time, ascent time is 10 days. Okay, so 10 days is a given time, average. So against that given time, what could be optimistic uh, uh, estimate you may have that of, okay, will it be possible if, if I can do it in eight days? This could be your optimistic estimation, isn't it? Other hand, other end, this could be instead of 10 days, to what extent this can go delay? This can get delayed. Okay, so pessimistic could be instead of ten, uh, you uh, find out that okay, this can go up to fifteen days also. Okay, so there's there's a variation variance from the mean. Mean is a given period. Mean is a sanctioned period, approved period. To what extent the variation on either way this could be done? Okay, so based on O and P, based on the extent of optimistic and pessimistic, we understand we work out something called as deviation, but standard deviation. Okay, to what extent there could be deviation in time? To what extent my uh, uh, my my project would be delayed within a permissible range? Standard deviation is a permissible range. So, okay, so let's try to understand that one. Okay, I have a, a, a again live case study. So maybe some uh, some technical terms are there, but I will try to explain uh, in detail so that everybody will understand. So this is an example, uh, and this is a live case, friends. Live case. 
this is a this is a project of uh, uh, some small uh, road construction road construction okay which involves uh, different activities three activities so total project divided to three major activities okay so let's understand this chart friends so look at this that for every activity some uh, duration has been approved mean okay duration uh, mean is duration approved what is that suppose for first activity uh, per duration is 30 days it means approved normal approved period assigned period is 30 days then against that given duration now you have to think of both ends optimistic and pessimistic so this should be very very clearly worked by the project manager friends so you must have your reasoning ready for it okay to what extent this could be optimistic okay if you if you have properly done planning done then this could be done as less as within 20 days 20 days these are all days friend days right if you go to the other extent pessimistic this can get delayed by 10 days so 40 days instead of 30 days okay the pessimistic would range would be 40 days okay so this is p and o p and o, for every task similarly you can see for activity two also for every activity you have to work it out okay so say per duration given 116 days okay then in that case optimistic you can possible that you can do it in 70 days also if if it get delayed to the other extent this could be 146 days okay similarly for third also so you have to work it out for every activity now we will calculate the deviation period okay we'll calculate deviation so let's work out let us understand all the steps first step one okay calculate each activities per duration and its standard deviation let's look at it okay so first calculate the variation of each activity separately say for example p minus o we have already worked out the range either n from the mean so p of course of pretty pessimistic so against the given the given per duration you have to work out the range so p minus o divided by six okay so this formula p minus o divided by six which is a variance okay so um when we square it when we square it okay is the variance so p minus o divided by six is the sd standard deviation right so first step is to calculate the standard deviation when you square it when you square it it will give you uh, the figure value for the variance variance okay so as you can see here the way i worked out okay just understand you need, should not calculate yourself okay so if the standard deviation is given 3.3 .3 for activity one when we square it then it will give variance of 10.9 it means almost variance of 11 days 10.8 is almost 11 days right so given the variance and given the p and o range so first activity can be delayed by 11 days 10.19 days okay that's what this meaning right similarly for activity two okay so this for uh p minus o 146 okay minus 70 divided by six okay whatever way you get a standard deviation of 12.6 when we square it it will give a variance of 150 15.8 okay similarly so you can work out for every activity friends then what we do step three then whatever variances we have worked out friends whatever variances for activity we have worked out we have to take a total add the variances for the group this is something called as variance of the group group variance group variance is the total variance for the total entire project in that project add the variances for the group and get a path variance path will take the square root of the total variance okay so this will give this will give a variance of the total project as well. okay so what it means you can see uh, when we add up 10.9 plus 15.8 plus 28.1 so we get a uh, um, and we can take average it okay average it okay so average comes to 14.06 days so the path variance comes to on 14.0 what does that mean friends it means based on on my own calculation on my own analysis and also my my estimate for o and p and o when i work out the the standard deviation and ultimate the variance okay my project could be delayed on an average by 14 days okay so if the if the, uh, the the total uh, per duration given is 116 uh, isn't it uh, sorry uh, 198 days for duration total is 198 days from 198 days okay if we calculate the permissible variance okay so calculate variance 
this can go get can go delayed by 14 days it means instead of 198 days given allotted duration okay this can happen in 212 days isn't it instead of 198 if we go by the maximum variance maximum variance okay the permissible period could be extended to 212 days 198 plus 14 okay i hope i have clarified the point okay anybody has any point you can you can ask me but per duration at least this simple understanding is clear yes sir uh, sir why we have to divide it by six there is some standard some standard is given this is the, some constant we are taken so in this you can divide by four also so in this case depending on the variance this has been divided by six there's some constant we are taken many cases we take we, we, we take it as a six there's some constant has been given in the formula and then you have to square okay and even this uh, standard division 12.6 uh, the square of that would be, uh, I don't think it will be 15.8. I think it should, should be, be I think 158. Yeah. Could be, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. I'll correct that. Fine. I think so, yeah. yeah because if we add then the whole uh, right. group variance. Yeah, it should be 150. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, the group variance, uh, I mean, the totally entire thing is changed. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So calculation we will do there. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. You are, you are understood well. Yes, thank you. So uh, the, the <laughs> Yeah. So, sir, one question. This path yes. variance is there. It is a positive or negative? Uh, yeah, both. Uh, no, this is neither positive nor negative. It is your it is your mental preparation. So you need to uh, calculate it, put up before the management. Okay, and you can you can get that allowance from the management. That okay, sir. If given uh, given the situation when it gets delayed, so the permissible variance could be could be fourteen days. So this uh, so fourteen point zero six either additional or minus. Both can be happen. Additional. Additionally, over no? and okay. above the over, 198 is the given given uh, duration, right? Yeah, so yeah. So we have to add 198 plus 14 days. 14 days, okay. So thanks. at the most maximum, this can go to 212 days. Yes, yes, okay, thanks. Or somewhere, suppose we we we, we don't go by that much for us. So somewhere you can see if you could finish that task, if not in 198 days, around 200 days, 205 days, so that management is aware. Yes, there are certain factors. So both for P and O. You must have valid reasons, friends. For this task, for this activity, why I'm optimistic? What are the factors which are which are in my favor? And those factors which are beyond my control. That, that's why I put this range as a pessimistic range. Isn't it? So that's why uh, the real, uh, uh, you can say, uh, the scale of your skill is required. Okay? As to work out the P and O. Uh, while giving the per duration, this is the management perception or management decision. That, okay, fine. For this activity, I can I can give you 30 days. So against that, you may have your own reading, own analysis. That's where you need to uh, very uh, uh, granularly work out P range and O range, pessimist and optimist. So that you'll be very close to work out the variance, permissible variance, allowed variance. Okay, friends, I hope that I could try to simplify this, but this way, Per chart is very well one of the one of the most scientific uh, uh, measure of evaluating the project. Okay, and to inform uh, the variance, permissible variance, it means so. This is nothing but it's a very clear, transparent line which you are drawn. That okay, sir. If the things go to that way, I may have uh, uh, the the variance to x x y z percentage or so many days or hours also. So that the management is aware. Fine. Okay. Put it out based on the reasons or based on the, you can say, uh, 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 valid reasons. This can go up to the, that much of variance. Okay. Sir, I have a uh, query yes. about the formula. Uh, now, the, the calculation have been clear, but I just want to understand the race to six. And, uh, is the, uh, you plan out the days or is it just a formula calculation? This for, six, you, you have the formula uh, as a solution. Okay, that would but, give you the fear, no, sir. So, but you six are, is a you, part of working days, or how? What is it? Six? Days, yeah, days, days, number of days, days. for every activity. Yes. Okay, and and uh, race to two is what? Uh, how, how is race to two calculated, sir? Six days is okay, but variance uh, the days. How? What is the uh, exactly calculate? Why race to two is? This is formula set formula, sir. This is what uh, all our scientists they have given it. We are we are using the ready-made formula. Okay. This is, that's why this will give uh, the, the range of variance, nothing else. 
रेंज Even though delayed, but this is within the within the range. For that, you need to have again. I am repeating. You need to have a very very uh, a very granular exercise to be done for P and O. More the range P and O, okay, you work out more accurate could be your standard deviation and variance also. That's what we need. Okay. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Uh, so sir, part, uh, one question. Yes, uh, so this uh, part chart is uh, applicable for all the industry standard calculations. Yes. For yeah, that, yeah, absolutely, you can, uh, provided that you feel that there could be variance, there could okay. be possibility of delay, or there okay. could be the delay. You feel that okay, fine, sir. Few things which are not in my hand, uncontrollable okay. factor uh, compelling you to have variance. There only you can do that. But some uh, uh, some projects, there are some projects where you have full confidence. Full control on the situation, on the ten, number of days, number of man hours. Okay, in that that case, you need not uh, uh, work out the variance. Management may not may not agree also. Why is needed? Okay, what what is what is that factor which will be compelling you to go for variance? That may not be. You may have your own working, but management or stakeholder may not agree also. I have that such project also. Say for example, I have a biotech project. What we handled around around four years back. Okay, uh, this was lab uh, lab based project. Very specific project of research project. We were given uh, 160 days. Okay, very precise. I remember 160 days to come out with that output. Okay, so precisely we complete that project in 160. Neither less nor more. We scheduled the activity in such a way that it was complete. Not even uh, CPM also we didn't apply. We didn't want to take a risk for CPM also. Okay, if I, we can complete in lesser days, no. Uh, let let me share with you that we could complete in 160 days only. There was no possibility of getting any variance also. Neither this could have been allowed also. Very critical activity, but yes, we make we 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 we, we could so see to uh, uh, make it within that much day only. And we have worked on not only number of days, but that was again granularly worked out in number of man hours and number of employees also, team members also. So that's also possible, sir. But there are some some cases like uh, infrastructure projects or any such government project. Of course, there is always scope for variance. And as I said, more the term, longer the term, definitely you have chances of getting variance. And uh, and vice versa, shorter the term, there may not be. There is no need. You cannot you cannot afford to uh, waste such man hours also. It take a case of it. any software project i have not seen any major variance which we have put up and where which was allowed also the management may not afford even customer may not afford to do that okay so this what a uh, 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 specific working again uh, friend as i said uh, in case of port also has some good case studies what i have this is this is a, 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 a hypothetical uh, uh, exercise okay this is not a actual study right Somewhere I have taken some figures, but what I have, I have worked out is a, is our own working just for your understanding. Okay. Otherwise, um, uh, area wise, uh, segment wise, I have some good port studies also done, which are quite in detail. So based on your requirement, definitely I can share that also with you. Right. Let's go ahead. Okay. One more, one more uh, uh, evaluation method, friends. One more evaluation method. This is something called a milestone slip chart. Milestone slip chart. Okay. Which will again give you indication as to there are said in this project friend, uh, depending on the industry, you know, they have given a scope of specific milestones. So they uh, the the customer wanted to reach that milestones within that time itself. Okay, so that's why they have put put they have provided the milestones, and we need to see how we fare, how we perform at at the respective milestones. Okay, just have let's have a uh, example. I will I'll try to explain you also. So this is this has been an eighty week project. So again, very small, uh, a small uh, uh, short term project. Okay, so uh, it was divided into twenty monitoring periods. Twenty monitoring periods means twenty milestones. Okay, so each period, each period, each milestone is four weeks each. Four weeks each. Okay, and in that you can see uh, am amongst the entire uh, age of the project, there are five major milestones. Within the twenty monitoring periods, 
five major milestones have been earmarked as you can see okay so milestones to review uh the performance where has been at a uh, week 15 a 28 as you can see 40 65 72. now we need to see against that milestone how this project has failed okay as you can see and let me tell you friends at every milestone we have failed every milestone there has been uh, there has been slippage the slippage of performance okay you can see the trend okay following trend so milestone a milestone a okay also failed one week slippage okay uh, uh, within the five monitoring periods okay one week each one week each okay that's why instead of uh, uh, reaching the milestone 15 weeks okay it it could take 20 weeks 20 weeks okay now coming to milestone b milestone b okay so um the milestone was planned at 28 weeks 28 weeks but we could take 32 weeks so again okay delay of 34 uh, weeks likewise you can see uh the initial slippage has impacted okay getting delayed at subsequent stages as we are seeing isn't it it has a cascading effect for the entire entire project as such okay so this is what you can see and you can see the how what which so the vertical line will show the slippage from the from the planned line from the planned timelines isn't it everywhere we these are you can say a uh, uh, reversing line or uh, you can say regression regression lines isn't it so overall you can see uh the, that's why it's called a milestone slip chart so all those uh, uh projects where we, we we are quite sure that there is an ascent period for the milestone and there's a possibility of some slippage some slippage could be there so this slippage could be counted could be counted and very well indicated okay in in the slip chart that's what you call a milestone slip chart every milestone friends every milestone okay right starting from milestone a b and up to e every stage there has been a slippage and this will have overall negative cascading effect on the project as such okay this is something one more uh, a chart for you friends this is also uh, uh, most of uh, uh, mid mid tenure, not too long, not too high, short. Okay, so, so these are around uh, 80 week project, so close to one and one and a half hour, one and a half year. Still, we could monitor that step chart. Okay, this is all about uh, my stone chart. Let's give, go ahead, friends. Give me one second. Let me share one second. Let's go ahead, friend, and understand another very important aspect broadly, of which speaks of the cost. Costing, isn't it? We, we, we talked about the time, timelines, time management as such, and uh, monitoring also how to, uh, to monitor uh, uh, the, 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 the performance at subsequent two to different uh, um, different tools likewise look at the cost assets so for given the project what could be the cost what the type of cost we may need so i have, I have tried to put down a uh, maximum types of cost here so uh, we may need some capital cost also. what is capital cost friends capital cost is a uh, fixed cost or long-term cost wherein we may have to uh, incur some uh, additional expenditure on the machines or you can say any any asset which is which has a long term long term utility okay similarly revenue cost but let me tell you uh given the tenure of any project okay maybe one year or two years uh, it the project doesn't give much scope on the capital assets so uh even you as a project manager also will see that the uh, the requirement of the capital cost could be kept as minimum as possible Okay, so we would be depending more on the revenue expenditure than the capital expenditure. Okay, but sometimes you may need uh, this is very critical need for you also, wherein you you you'd mention the requirement of the capital asset, capital expenditure also. Right. So those could be the cost. Revenue cost is maximum uh, needed, friends. Okay, the most critical, most important cost would be revenue cost or recurring cost. Then I have shown it separately as a people cost also. Uh, friends, as you could be aware, amongst all the assets what we have, 
right? The utility of manpower is absolutely at most important. At the same time, the cost also, okay? So one of the costliest asset for us would be manpower cost, okay? Sorry to say, but yes, this is a fact also. The cost on people, my manpower, human is are highest. Then control cost, whatever control link, certain certain aspect will be required. Then contingency and reserve. We have talked about it, right? To the extent we feel that okay, if if I need as an emergency, I if I need to provide for some contingency, some reserve, that would also add to your cost. Okay, as I said, contingency could be in the range of five percent to eight percent. But again, if you feel that as an emergency, I need to make provision, you must. You should be bold enough to provide for such a contingency as well into the total cost also. Now, all these cost friends, I tried to divide into two parts again, which are directly required into the project and indirectly. Just have a look, friends. <clears throat> Direct cost, of course, which are impacting directly for the production, manufacturing, performance right diet cost labor of course all material raw material stores spares packing material quality control material right everything then uh, transportation etc et right plant and equipment this could be a capital cost to the extent required if it, is it really required critically required then you can definitely incorporate but uh, for for a mid uh, short term short to medium term projects okay the requirement of plant and equipment could be very, very low. To the extent possible, we would be managing that project with the existing plant and existing equipment itself without requiring uh, to add the cost, additional cost, right? Subcontractor, etc., all your vendors also. And there are some a certain indirect costs also. Just have a look. Overheads and administrative costs, training, insurance, inflation, etc., 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 right? Now, in this, call, in this total list, friend, I feel it's my opinion that even though we have shown the training cost or the cost on training of my manpower and overheads, okay, do you think that it should be shown indirectly? Somebody may have reservation. I have my own reservation. That's why I'm asking. So my open question to all: Is it fair to incorporate the training cost and overhead cost in the indirect cost rather than showing as a direct cost? Anybody? Yeah, I think it is quite fair because uh, a one with one training, uh, several projects can be taken. Okay, perfect. So instead of incurring it as a direct cost for that particular project, we can always take of course, it as a direct cost. Whatever cost I'm showing, which are relevant to the specific project only. Okay. So uh, this is in accordance with... Uh, uh, accounting principles, where uh, as per according uh, according to the accounting principles, these are uh, supposed to be accounted for in the indirect cost head, okay. rather than in the direct cost head. Okay. So I think this is quite appropriate is as per as that. This is, is appropriate. You feel? I feel so. Fine, but okay for everybody has. I have my own opinion. That's why I'm offering. Okay. How about the overheads? I'm very precisely asking on these two costs. Otherwise, I'm okay for other costs, which are indirectly impacting the project. But how about the training? Of course, you have explained very well. Fine. If it is as per the uh, as per the accounting norm that it should be shown as an indirect cost, not directly impacting your production. So this could be. How about the overheads? Because I think to a certain extent, the overheads are related to your production capacity or to what extent the capacity being used. Okay, so this could be directly related to some overheads. Why not to show in, in that cost under in di direct cost instead of indirect? That's my question to you. Okay, fine. This is my opinion. So you have your own, but I had in mind. That's why I put an open question to you. Thank you, friends. So this is all about, uh, uh, you can say, aggregate of cost which we may have to incur annually. So these are all additional costs which, which is coming to this project very precisely. Even though I have shown this, this is an indicator for you for every at cost item. You have to be very, very linear, very detailed workout for you. Okay. If it is capital cost, what are the capital items you are going to acquire? 
okay revenue cost what are the heads different heads on which the revenue cost will be incurred so every time so when we say revenue cost friend you need to work out the operating cycle of the project operating cycle of working cycle of the project so okay, starting from zero okay how the pro how the project will go on at every subsequent stage what are what are good to be your revenue item or maybe your recurring item accordingly the entire cycle uh, working capital cost Operating cycle cost you have to consider. Okay, that entire cost would be uh, equal to your project cost, right? So this is what uh, we have seen, friends. Our as far as cost is concerned. Uh, can I me, sir? sir? Can I disturb you? Yeah, please, please. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so oh, sorry, go ahead. Banking and uh, insurance, whereas uh, even the taxes, freight, and license. I'm sorry. These are directly. I can't hear you properly. Can you make it slightly louder? Hello, hello, hello. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, uh, don't you think these are directly related to the project? Uh, because insurance is by taxes is uh, by government. So you yes. know, it, uh, I mean, in my opinion, it should not be like indirectly. It, it is a direct impact. Sorry, right? which okay. one? Which one, sir? Sorry. Uh, insurance taxes. Insurance taxes. Okay, okay. Uh huh. You mean yeah. uh, those should be uh, should be indicated as per the direct cost? Yes, because anyway, which ways? I mean, you know, if you are into project, obviously these are the costs which are going to be incurred while running the project. Okay, so sir, yeah. even even the freight and license also is a part of exactly. direct. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's exactly insurance, taxes, freight, licenses. Yeah, a contingency you can say yes because it is provisional. You know, if it is required, then only we we can use. Okay, but otherwise, uh, even inflation for that matter is variable. Inflation contingencies and okay. Uh, okay. Fine, fine, fine. overhead. Okay, okay. So this could be a this could be a a point of discussion, but definitely based on my experience again and uh, whatever way uh, people the bifurcate the cost between indirectly and directly, which I put before you. So you okay. may have different views also. Anyway, it's Correct. a question of aggregate expenses. What we are trying to uh, uh, relate here is what could be my direct cost, which could be okay. related to the proportionate. More manufacturing or proportionate uh, production of my of my items or whatever uh, of my goods, right? So these are going directly to the company. Somewhere, uh, indirect cost could be your 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 uh, cost which has no relevance with the with the capacity being used, isn't it? That could be. So you may have some view uh, view that okay, freight, licensing, etc. This could be this may have a proportional share of cost. So this could be shown as di direct cost. Fine, I I I can take up this to find. Sir, so actually, uh, can I come in here? This is as per accounting norms. Whenever you are uh, putting anything in the financial uh, statement, yes, sir. Uh, these are the standard things which are uh, indirect cost and which are the direct cost. Perfect, perfect, so, perfect. So that is how I think it has been placed on the indirect uh, cost head, even though they are directly being used in the project. But right. as per accounting norms, they are supposed to be part of the accounting. So whenever we are making a financial statement of yes, the project. It okay. will always come as uh, indirect cost. Uh, that is, you mean the reason that it has been okay? You mean the the bifurcation being shown here is appropriate as per norms? As per the accounting norms, yes. They are not so they are they are appropriate. Yes, sir. As per Great. the accounting norms, uh, what uh, our cost accountants and charter accountants Great. follow? Great. Thank you. This is uh, how it is bro broken up. Fantastic, fantastic. Great, great. This is a good uh, good uh, uh, input for us. So, so does it mean that this, I mean, uh, the classification which has been given as a directly related, indirectly is proper? I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I mean, just now our friend has said has uh -huh. he has put in his opinion. So does that mean uh, the classification what he had given uh, it is an industry standard? That's what yes. So I think uh, whatever we have we are seeing at in the this, slide. This is as per the accounting standard. Yeah, as per yes, the, the okay. as per okay. the set okay. norms accounting norms set norms. Okay. Okay. That's Fair. fine. So Fair. okay, but it was just okay. a point of discussion. That's why I put before you. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. These are very thank very you, valuable you, input for us. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Great. Okay. Let's go ahead, friends. Even though right now one more point, as you can see, even though I've shown the people cost separately, but again that will also count the revenue cost only, isn't it? People cost is nothing but this would be a revenue cost, recurring cost, which would come under the cost. Right. Thank you. Okay, friends. Now coming to the reporting mechanism, or maybe you can say uh, um, 
uh, the 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 reports what you, you generate from time to time what are the uh, ideal normally okay what are the normal output which we generate okay so as to monitor and evaluate supervise the project or supervise the output of the project just few of them so a few of which normally related to the project what we look for we generate the report you can add also few of them or you can delete also so this, this is the you can say uh, not standard but normal uh, list of project what we generate project budget information this could be a, a, a this could be your business case then schedule action items okay so this could be your pmp okay pmp and its performance based on the pmp whatever whatever report you get time to time this will come under schedule item action item earn value performance okay so net value what what way you have performed how much you are going to earn this could be projected or could be uh, uh, um, uh, actual report also so firstly you can you can generate the earn value performance which you are going to get and based on that how much could be the actual value you have performed okay that you can get and compare with your working projection change requests very very important friends as we have seen there could be one even though um, you have prepared the business case and this has been approved but sometimes some smaller minor requests could come always come again in, in within your purview within your authority also okay so from time to time whatever request which need to be done maybe some overhauling maybe some maintenance cost or maybe some some small change we need to get it done into the machinery whatever way right so all this change request and the relative cost if required okay so all such individual change requests should come to you should be routed to you where whatever you uh, you approve those should be well maintained in the form of report which are which are being made and accepted by you also performance report friends variance we already discussed okay based on the based on the per chart okay you can you can you can formulate the report and you can get at every task for every task for every you can this specific uh, job also so for this job how much was my variance and against that variance how much is my what is my performance so again uh, against the variance worked out against the variance which has been allowed permissible you can you can see the performance actual okay whether it, it was of course actually when the when we say variance variance is the is the outer limit okay outer limit of your performance so in that case to what extent you perform okay so act, against the variance the the performance could be your barometer to showcase right that could be a report then status report status report would be the overall progress report okay from time to time so in a normal in case we need to generate the status report on weekly basis at the end of week okay looking at the milestone stages or the stages where you are supposed to perform based on that a projected stage to what extent you perform what is the current status of the project what is the current standing of the project okay so even here also i have one very well very well built up the report format that also i'll share with you so overall that should give you the feel okay overall you need to have a feel your own remarks okay your own uh, uh, observation on that and then of course you need to update the status of the the project to higher authorities to the stakeholder to the sponsor whoever you are supposed to report progress report is a final report friends that's why i mentioned as achievement of the team so finally wherever you have you have reached okay it's not only the overall progress of the project but also this is an accomplishment of each team member also so the, the overall progress of the pro, uh, project should be broken down user wise team member wise team leader wise also that all in aggregate would show the performance of you as a leader also okay this could be uh, aggregated as your report right so you need to work it out on the overall project report that needs to be uh, before we before we uh, uh, terminate the project before we close the project right in that that point of time you need to submit you you need to again uh, present yourself also presentation of your progress right so these are few of the important reports what i feel should be part and parcel of your reporting mechanism okay so uh, yes uh, sorry sir uh, can you please go back to previous sir. slide yes sir here you have mentioned the performance report and it is a variance uh, you have shown in the performance, performance report is a per, per chart based on the per chart okay 
Parayan, so uh, assuming that you have prepared, uh, prepared a per chart at the beginning of your uh, charter, based on the per chart, you have to uh, say, take the, paper, uh, uh, the, the the output, okay, based on that per, right? What extent you are performing now? Whether it is within the variance, of course, you have to be within the variance, but to what extent? What is the degree of variance? Actual, actual. That has to be uh, generated by you. Very important report, sir. Very, very important report. Because at one time you have we have taken we have taken the range that okay given given the given the duration again the duration there are two parts P and O okay and again that P and O you have also worked out the you have variance also standard deviation in the form of variance so against that variance what extent you are performing okay either end either end whether you are performing better or suppose you are taking a, a P and O somewhere range that should indicate with the variance report or performance. Typically, uh, looking, uh, uh, having a focus on the port chart. I hope I, I could clarify, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, friends, let's go ahead. Okay, friends, with this, we come, uh, come to the end of this session. Let's go ahead. We have a few more. Give me one second. Let me share with you. I hope you can see the slide. Yeah. Great. Okay, friends. Uh, a few another aspects we'll try to touch base for the time we have. Okay. Uh, we are discussing on the various aspects of a project and your qualification to be one of the best project manager. So to add to your qualification, of course, quality matters. Okay, to what is the degree of your quality? Your what is the technique, quality technique, quality parameter? What you are seeing? Okay, let's try to understand what we mean by the quality as for the project quality is concerned. So, uh, in simple word, as you can see, is a degree to which a set of inherent characteristics fulfill the project requirement. So, whatever characteristics we are designed, whatever attributes we are designed at the beginning of the project in the case of business case. Okay, so to, to what extent we are achieving? Okay, so that is the quality that would be the quality which tries to combine, embrace all phases, all parts of the project. Okay, so the the infusion of quality starts from the beginning. It's, it's not at the end. It's not just the end flavor which we add. It tries to combine all the phases, all the party. Uh, uh, you can say all the uh, stages of the project right from the beginning itself. Okay, starting from the definition and all the phases of your project also okay sir in the yes. in terms of the project quality uh -huh. how to quantify it uh, in uh, you know some other uh, related to uh, un, uh, other than it uh, you know industry for it industry i have the understanding yes sir we have the non functional requirements as a quality attributes for example yeah. a yeah. particular yeah. process has to be executed okay. in 2 seconds Perfect. Otherwise, it should be terminated, for example. Great. Great. So in, in such a way, we are, you know, quantifying and we, we are verifying the quality of the projects, you know, uh, as per the our uh, SRS documents or uh, non-functional requirements. Okay, very uh, good. But other than that, if you are saying that uh, if a particular uh, quantified time, if you are executing and covering all the requirements of the client so it is a uh, we can measure the quality but uh, what what should be the parameter to check actually other than this <coughs> example which i have given you <coughs> sorry say okay I, I will tell you sir to make it simple suppose uh, um, in terms of the requirement of the customer okay what are the requirements of the customer definitely to attend something to perform something or to deliver something which is full of certain certain attributes what are what are the qualities? Nothing but the other attributes which you have to incorporate into that 
outcome, isn't it? Some some attributes, some characteristics. So uh, at that point of time, you find that okay, they, the customer wants twenty five parameters to be built up, or twenty five attributes to be a part of the project. So these twenty five characteristics are nothing but these are the quality parameters, right? So you need to understand out of the twenty five whether I can reach all, whether I could be in a position to reach all the uh, uh, fulfill all the twenty five parameters or as I uh, as we discussed yesterday, sir, that okay, twenty out of twenty five, twenty I can set up. Whereas there are some parameters, okay, which are which are uh, which are very difficult to estimate. So if it is difficult to estimate, it is difficult to deliver also. I hope you are getting my point. So wherever the parameterization is very clearly understood and it is possible, we can inbuilt that in the design. Rest all few which could not be estimated. Okay, so you don't understand as to exactly what I need to achieve. Say for example, I'll tell you the example, sir. Suppose um, um, there is there there is a, a a food processing project. Okay, so you need to uh, uh, um, evolve a product which will have uh, you can say uh, um, processing of the food which will have a uh, 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 more life. Okay, so customer wants that uh, the the, uh, the the life of the project should be minimum six months for example i'm saying okay the life of the profit six months you try it say for example you can you have tried it but customer also wants that the maximum moisture content in the product should be less than 10 percent example i'm putting i have i have, I have worked on that project right so you will understand okay fine uh, i can understand the the preservative quality of the project i have done that so i have seen that okay the 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 the, uh, the useful life of the project could be six months fine but when it comes to the moisture content also you find that okay this somewhere to maintain the moisture content at less than 10 percent may not be possible so that parameterization within the quality parameter may not be possible you very difficult to estimate and very difficult to maintain also so basically we have to see the operational and technical feasibility as well absolutely correct. yeah absolutely correct yeah. you you because you are the authority you you know it very well you are aware that okay out of 25 things which are to be inbuilt into that software or any that output possible but two three things which may not be possible at least may not be possible in a given time zone it may require some extra time or maybe uh, uh, pretty pretty extra time so you can say fine if these are the timelines i can do this with these 22 parameters for the balance three parameters okay uh, we need to have another project it's also possible i hope i could clarify uh, on your point sir yes sir thank you sir yeah, thank, thank you, you so much okay friends that's so this call uh, specifies the quality something called a quality let's go ahead and understand the understanding of quality okay it may be different friends from uh, a management uh, from different uh, management uh, part part of it right so how what are the very interesting friends how the different management uh, uh, levels or authority they look at the quality just look at it this could be different so you must have seen for some somebody uh, some for some and this they will say fine what is quality for me it's fitness for use if your product if your uh, end product is fit for use by the customer it means you have achieved the quality other 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 way around this fitness for the purpose Okay, for the purpose, this project was launched. If that, that it can meet the requirements and the purpose, that's it. That's the quality for me. Or somebody will say more precisely that whatever requirement which I come up to you, precisely USPs, okay, USPs. If your product is in conformity with the requirements, strictly within the conformity requirement, then it should say, okay, fine, this is in conformity with the quality also. Ultimately, very simply, you can see, if customer is satisfied, customer has shown his satisfaction, okay, about the product, it means he is satisfied about the quality also. So the perception can vary. Perception could be could go up, uh, could can go up to more and more critical uh, critical areas of the of course, right? So likewise, we let us see uh, uh, somewhere within the within the understanding of the quality frame. There is a very well known term which many of you must be knowing, which is called TKM. Okay, so as a part of our discussion, this is an opportunity for me because I have I've been working in the quality uh, uh, tools, a lot of tools. So let's understand what is TKM as such. Uh, sir, can I raise a question? Yeah, here? please, sir. Can you please go on the back? Side, I raise it. Okay. Yes. 
सर हियर द थिंग इज व्हेन वी से क्वालिटी कैन कैन आई इन माय ओन टर्म्स कैन आई से इट इट्स अ व्हाट आई कैन से योर ओन लैंग्वेज योर ओन लैंग योर ओन टर्म्स नो आई मीन ऑब्वियसली जनरली आइडेंटिफाइड बाय द कस्टमर एंड बाय द मैनेजमेंट इज इट अ वेरिएबल द क्वालिटी कैन बी वेरिएबल uh from uh, from authority to authority no uh, overall well what do you mean <laughs> i'll just i'll just say is this subject to certain example. conditions exactly it now we are any... saying i'll just give you a classical example please, now sir, we are fitness for use right now there yeah. is a company called allen soli or arrows okay as a brand yeah for them uh, they are making a uh, shirt okay yes right yeah and this shirt is the fitness for use is obviously it has to be used by the customer that is uh, uh, by the office going uh, uh, yeah professional so they are using it the purpose is already met the requirements already met uh, the conformity of requirement is already met even the customer is satisfied because you know the professionals who are uh, the white collar professional they are using the allen sorry perfect but at the same time but at the same time the same shirt is being manufactured by the local brand right again the fitness for purpose use and the requirement is already met and even the customer is also satisfied whereas the customer is a different uh, vertical i mean it's a different uh, uh, level the grade of yeah yeah the category is different exactly okay so but but in both the terms uh, it is a shirt and uh, if the product remains the same and even all the all the conditions you know use purpose requirements and satisfaction is again met very good question but uh, i'm i'm very clear on this good very good question this always uh, varying sir always variable and we go by the uh, by, by the opinion satisfaction satisfaction at large largely will customer say okay fine most of my customers are happy so you cannot keep everybody all customers all the time happy isn't it so the degree right. of satisfaction cannot be 100% sir absolutely mm-hmm. correct so what is what is our understanding perception is overall largely it is happy so it means uh subject for example suppose there somebody allen soli is the shirt okay what you have developed and you have delivered to the customer or uh, to the right. your customer so customer will say fine uh, uh, this would be a uh, customer will be satisfied subject mm-hmm. to the condition that he is ready to uh, pay higher for it isn't it or right. his, uh, his his uh, his shape is such that it fits for him so exactly. we what we are take, talking uh, take into account sir is, is overall uh, normal st- uh, uh, understanding normal level of understanding normal level of satisfaction for a normal man having that expectation right that of course will be varying sir yes absolutely correct i absolutely agree with you so we we are going by the collective opinion so the customer mm-hmm. has a collective opinion that okay fine overall i am happy means my customer is happy overall this correct. cannot be said at any point of time that all my customer would be happy at any of mm-hmm. this is absolutely hypothetical then if you are saying that perfectly said i yeah. absolutely agree with you yeah absolutely this could be okay. variable absolutely thank you sir thank yeah. you this is a correct opinion absolutely Last, the, the opinion uh, the 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 the, uh, the degree yeah. of and again, opinion class. opinion is not opinion is not coming from one person you know it is coming from the class doesn't mean right. that he yeah, is not satisfied perfect this could be exactly. some corner of the world somebody will definitely have a uh, different perception true absolutely absolutely correct very well thank said you. very well said thank, thank you. you thank you let's go ahead friends so we are discussing about a tqm what is that approach which though so many who have been part who have been i can say researcher into quality management they are aware it's an uh, well known japanese concept which approach uh, which is implemented okay uh, uh, used for qip quality improvement program across the organization which tries to involve everybody everyone across the project not only across the project but yes uh, i will go one step ahead will say this will be uh, involving across the organization everybody in the organization but let us stick up to the project then okay where uh, um, the intention idea is to get some ideas or uh, the the vision is to get ideas from the employees from your own team some ideas to improve so how this can be done better way environment is a of participatory leadership so it means it is not limited to only top leadership only top most leadership or somebody some class no tkm always says and the japanese philosophy also always says you should try to have participation at large make maximum people if possible everybody okay in in the in the organization or in the project should be a part of the participate of the 
this concept improve the customer service why you came friends it's not something in the hollow right so uh, the the in basic intention of tukem happens to be to improve uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, uh, an effort to improve the customer service that's why uh, the concept of tukem has come up which has emanated from the customer view first customer has been kept at the center benchmark major activities to improve so you must benchmark priority wise what is the what is the what is the mark we need to reach from again uh, uh, beyond that mark okay benchmark okay you can see that yes we are on the proper way of improving myself or uh, implementing the quality asset ultimately ultimately you need to uh, uh, see that our cycle time gets reduced it means overall cycle working capital cycle or operation cycle in a way this would save good amount of time good amount of money also so ultimate uh, aim is to reduce the cycle time of the inactivity okay let's go ahead okay friends so uh, just to understand uh, quality more there are there are some good mantras okay good mantras which have been put up by some theories well known theories so let's just have an um, opportunity to put before you so these are the quality gurus okay globally known okay so four theories which we we'll try to uh, touch base and understand there are four theories deming theory juran theory crosby and taguchi let us see uh, they have they have put uh, their their their, their uh, uh, can say uh, uh, pens taking efforts to shape the quality movement okay in the world also so let's let us see what do they say how far it, it may apply to us first is deming theory edward deming theory this something called a pdca cycle i am quite sure many of you must have studied also there are well known theories friends okay so what it says pdca plan first plan it okay see in the planning process how you can improve the present practices present activities look at it okay activity going on how i can uh, uh, incorporate the quality uh, uh, quality element and improve it do it if you feel that okay i can do it so do it implement improve it on a small scale not a large scale so uh, 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 deming is very very careful that do it on a smaller scale first then based on the, the that, uh, that that action check it up or check it up test to check what whether it got result these are results so what are results you are expecting out of that whether they are coming up whether they are coming up to small scale okay if it is coming up assuming that they are coming up then you can implement corrective action needed in the plan you find that okay before i put it into on the larger scale i need to put up the corrective action i need to tell somewhere okay which are required do it then we can go on the larger scale so very very mod, uh, well known uh, modus operandi very well known uh, philosophy that you should do it on a smaller scale but you, you must have the spirit pdc cycle plan do check and again act as okay so in terms of deming he says if you are really uh, 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 reaching up to stage of pdc cycle so your minimum benchmark requirement is to achieve 85% of the quality so whatever quality you are looking for if not 100% but it is your responsibility of the management to achieve up to 85% of the quality standards okay this is what deming cycle says juran cycle or juran theory quality theory okay what he says he has advocated three basic concepts friends first as we have seen now what my friend also mentioned fitness for use whether my product is such it's fit for use largely for 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 the, for the customer at large then there is trilogy also there is something called as you must have quality improvement philosophy then if you have the quality improvement spirit you must plan it you must plan seriously for this okay holistically then you have quality control okay so plan it then you have uh, quality implementation then you must have a control measure also how to how to build up and sustain that quality somewhere for the quality control there's a trilogy then juran has also uh, uh, you can say also caution everybody wants quality okay everybody wants yet i need to maintain the quality but what is the cost so very carefully he has touched base as a precaution what is going to be your additional cost is it affordable okay if if, if you are going to for any quality implement is it affordable cost how much is the cost of quality okay this is about juran advocation then crosby theory very very philip crosby very well well known i suppose okay he is very clear about uh, the, the the philosophy four absolutes four theories 
uh, elements of the theory. Prevention over inspection. What should be your spirit? You need to do it from the root itself, begin itself, so that you need not go at the inspection sub uh, post facto, post facto prevention. Do something so that you can prevent the the, the defect into the system. Zero defect. Ultimately, Crosby is saying that you are, you should lead to such a way that you 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 carry out your activity of the project with zero defect. Conformity to requirements. So you must have control. Uh, you must have the control that all your requirements are done being done being met as per the conformity of the standards so you must have a table of conformity and then he has caution also cost of non-conformity as a precaution he says okay fine you have to do that you have to do that and you have to conform on constant basis in case in case there's a non-conformity non-compliance what could be the cost what could be the damage you can come up okay that also he has mentioned in this theory Last one, Taguchi theory. Taguchi theory is one, one of those uh, 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 Japanese Japanese uh, scientists. Okay, quality science. What he says, okay, so like others have said, quality should be designed in the process, prevention itself, right from the root, in the place, right, not inspected, not at the latter stage. That's why you must find out appropriate time at the beginning itself. So when we are talking about the planning for the project, right, so you must see. What way I, I could parameterize, I could implement the quality there itself at the root. Reduce deviation from the target. This speaks of the deviation, variance. So you have variance, sorry, you have the, the, the given period, mean. So your, your deviation from the mean, okay, should be minimum. Any deviation from the mean should be least to the extent possible. Cost of quality to be measured against the standard. So this is speak, also speaks of the deviation, standard deviation, or maybe variance. Okay, so how much is the cost of quality to measure? To what extent there is a variation? So he says, fine, it's very difficult to maintain within within the mean. If that happens, so what is the cost of the movement from from the standard, from the mean as well? What is the cost of quality to be measured? Okay, if you are deviating from the standard, that was uh, uh, Dr. Taguchi says. So these are few well-known theories, friends. Somewhere I am quite sure. You could be deploying one of the principle of this people also. Okay, quality. That's what we discuss. Okay, what is quality? Great. What is the great friend? Is the level of functionality of the produce also. But quality is something more than that. Quality is to be achieved by met, meeting the stated requirements, specific requirements. Also. So as I said, why quality? So customer satisfaction. We are trying to gauge and measure the satisfaction of the customer. So meet customer needs through evaluation. How we lo should look at the customer and his requirements. Okay, so you should make the customer needs to the evaluation, defining and managing the expectation in a gradual manner, systematic manner. Project aims to satisfy customers' quality expectations, not only the expectation of the outcome, but yes, okay, duly incorporated, inbuilt, okay, quality expectation as well. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, sir, which is the most practiced uh, quality theory? Yes, sir. Which is the most practiced uh, quality theory among these four? Yes, yes. Which uh, among these four theories? You mean? Yeah. Uh, I suppose uh, a Crosby theory is more applicable to today's dates. Yeah, as you are rightly pointed out, because these are historical theories. Uh, we need to see that which could be well applicable today. I feel my opinion and my experience also. Uh, uh, Crosby theory is more applicable, sir. Today's, in today's days and somewhere we can combine also uh, the principle but yes in a most practical way uh, um, Crosby theories of uh, uh, looking at uh, um, uh, the concept is more applicable uh, today very good questions correct thank you thank you thank you sir how about Deming theory in today's yes. yeah uh, Deming, that's what I said Deming theory also well applies to our mind fine but I feel that uh, 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 Crosby theory has a wide application in today's days. If we apply it in full sense. Yeah, from management perspective, PDCA cycle is the well-known cycle because you have the uh, uh, plan, uh, do, check, and act. And again, plan, do, oh, and PDCA check. You mean? PDCA, yeah, PDCA, okay. uh, uh, for management perspective, is a very good theory. Very good. Great, great, great. Yeah, yeah. You may have your perception. Yeah, that's what, uh, that is the reason I put before you. So it all uh, that which element you can deploy 
and of course it's not theory wise but you can have an, a, a combined application of the concept also to what extent you can do that but again i feel uh, uh, the, the guru who has concept, who has conceptualized the cost of non compliance that is very very important for us if you don't do that what could be the cost over a period of time yes caution does also yeah, you, are right. you are right sir because four theories are on their perspective uh, different perspective they have uh, developed this and if we combine this it will be great achievement for the, uh, for us Absolutely. also in yes. different perspective perfect right. if, if yeah. not all but few elements in a combined way you can you can, you can in a gel manner you can do that in a comprehensive manner also. perfect thank you please go ahead friends so few uh, more elements just to touch base so when we look at the quality management so it is it is it is it is uh, uh, embedded with three different uh, elements so you may have to uh, uh, have a quality planning then quality assurance and quality control quality planning we discussed that there is a specific parameterization norms to be set up while we are planning for the business case or initial planning process we need to understand what is meant by qa quality assurance okay which all my colleagues into into it industry they know it very well I, I also uh, I'm also part of it. So, what we let us see what could be different between Q and QC. So, on way one way, both of us both both they are very important. Okay, very close to my all uh, uh, deliverables. But how we should di differentiate? Let us see that. Okay, but well, let's see the comparative chart to make it clear. So, for our understanding, I put it a comparative chart. <clears throat> so what is QA? So uh, the QA, uh, when we say QA, it, it means very, very pertinent for us. It means it says that goal is to do right first time. So whatever is right. Sir, so sorry, sorry, sir, you forgot to share the screen, I guess. No, no, not yet. So this, this is all the ah, okay, same okay. thing. I'm, I'm okay, summarizing fine. here, sir. Fine, fine, fine. Please go ahead. Sir. I can go back if you need. No issue at all. Okay, so I'm just summarizing the understanding between the QC and QA. So it means, so for us, friends, for all of us, QA is more important because it, it would give a direction that, okay, whatever right you find, okay, should be done first. And we should try to prevent the defect, defect prevention. So anything, any prevent which may come later on, try to prevent then and there itself. Against QC, what is QC? QC is a quality control. So out of the control, out of the monitoring, it can come at a later stage. So different identification in the end product. So this can happen. So there is a gradual journey, friends. So we, we first do maximum right things. But again, when we go into the actual activity, which may come across some defects still coming up. So okay, the next scale of activity would be QC, quality control, controlling the quality. Okay, over a period of time, out, which coming out of the end product or maybe interim product also, intermediate product also. Okay, so what is QA, friends, as we understood well now, is a set of activities, various set of activities to ensure quality in the process, initial process itself, when we develop the product or when, when we design the product. So it is it is first action for us. Then what is QC for us? <clears throat> QC is a set of activities, again, for ensuring the quality in the products at subsequent stage. So here the focus is on identify the defect in the actual product not in design okay whenever the actual product comes up whatever defect could be there possibly so we try to find out and focus on those quality control so uh, the theme is very very clear friends for qa this proactive approach and based on the process the process based approach design based approach right whereas qc is a reactive approach and based on the product outcome based on the maybe intermediate product, intermittent product, or the end product based product. Okay. We again, we inspect and we, we put the control measures and then we come out with the quality. Look at the tools, friends. Normally, what are the tools which we use under QA? This could be all differently machine, maintenance, different audit requirements, compliance requirement, testing, unit testing, very, very important. Unit testing is a is a step-by-step -step activity, okay, through which gradually we go on assuring the QA reviews various reviews okay the level of training what we do all the good processes so step uh, benchmark the processes right and giving the providing the adequate time whereas qc same way so this could be various tests uh, which are conducted out of on the product validation of the product correcting validation okay inspection also 
So those controls coming out of the inspection, verification, and sampling also. Sampling also part of the product, right? So this is where we have a bunch of uh, the activities for, for Q and QC. Uh, sir, uh, can I ask you one question? Yeah, please, sir. Yeah. Uh, does that mean quality assurance QA is a three quality measure and uh, quality control would be post quality? Uh, I mean post production measure. Uh, yes, somewhere yes. So uh, QC will come at a later stage when you start the activity, right. whereas the QA should be the set of set of activities in the, in the design itself. Right. Prior to entering into the actual process. Correct. So, uh, so am I both right? Both should have control. Both both are the, both are the, the set practice which we did. Through. Whereas a QA it will be ongoing activity. QC could be possibly could be one time activity when we are designing the uh, the plant, designing the the machine, designing the, the activity be done. Okay, but both so, both of them will come at the uh, uh, at the first level itself, right? I mean uh, before the production. QA will will come at the first level. Yeah, QA will come and then it will be succeeded by QC. Yeah, but then both in a will come before, manner, yeah. before the product is designed and uh, given to the market. Uh, QA will come at a later stage. Okay, so yeah, of course, before delivery. Perfect. Before delivery. Perfect. We yeah. need to make sure that we have adequate quality control have been deployed. Perfect. perfect. Yeah, it's of like under the denim theory, when you say, no, plan, do, check, and act. When planning yeah. is, I think, is a QA session. And when you do this, is the QC. Perfect, sir. Very well said. Very well said. Or post action also. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Sampling, test production, right. pilot yes, production. Sir. Okay. So at that point, you come, we come to there, whatever defects could be there. So we apply the QF measures. Perfect. Perfect. Very well said. So for us, it's a combination of both the activities to be done critically. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, friends, let's go ahead. So uh, another uh, aspect definitely waiting for us is, of course, uh, let me share with you. This speaks of the possible risk. I'm, I'm seeing possible risk. What could be possible is in the context of any project which may come. So let us be prepared for that also. So friends, let us understand in simple means what, what is risk within the within the framework of the project. Okay, so I see I feel could be an uncertain event uncertain event which we are not planned right but we had uh, we, we we are not planned but we we, we are pursued it may come right uncertain event okay so uncertainty which may have positive and negative i think i mentioned also sometime um sometime the risk or this situation can give us opportunity also if it is given opportunity this could be a positive effect right if it is get, getting getting a or if, if, if it is uh, you can say a drag, drag, dragging us Okay, or you can say pulling us in a negative way, right? This could be negative impact. So it may have positive or negative impact on the goals and objective of the project if it occurs, if it really occurs. Okay, so I feel the risk can also be described as a product of the probability. Is a probability, isn't the product or outcome of the probability of an event occurring times its impact if it did. Okay, so event occurring on the times its impact, if it has some impact. That impact could be positive or negative. If the impact is negative, then it is really risk area. So it's a it's a matter of caution for you. Wasn't the caution of for worry of yours? In some cases, this can be opportunity also. I mentioned during pandemic time, okay, even though this was a risk area for so many, but that could emerge, that could give opportunity for few few people also. So it can have positive impact. So if at all we are looking at uh, sincerely about the risk and risk man management part, friends, okay? So what should be our actionable? Before that, uh, uh, let's try to understand how I tried to uh, uh, divide risk into internal and external also. Okay, so internal, I feel internal risks are more severe, friends. Okay, to the extent of whatever we, we have planned, I suppose if that risk comes, okay, so internal risk could be more severe, whereas external risk could be if at all this happens. And these are mega risk, macro risk, macro level risk, which may impact on the project or may not impact or it may have a little impact, right? So let's look at the extra risk first. Extra risk could be government, government rules, regulations, okay? So whatever could be the frame of uh, policy framework of the government, whether it has uh, some impact, 
negative impact say for example uh, a sudden change in the in the gst for example okay which is which is impacting on the category of your goods definitely it could be risk area also so somewhere your planning may collapse whatever financial planning feasibility of worked out it can collapse also or suppose for example which i have faced that um, government has certain uh, 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 you can say prerogative to define certain goods which is a priority or non priority which which, which was a, a project for export friends i was handling a project export project for my customer right in that case uh, customer was a regular supply to to other countries regular supply regular export to other companies but government through some policies for some reasoning they have put a ban on that goods they put a tab ban on that goods so definitely it was a risk for that set of goods okay well, fortunately he was also dealing in some other category of goods we can survive but at least for that regular regular goods being supplied it was definitely an extra risk for him market fluctuation yes always there we understand that okay so, so this is identified risk so to what extent the market moves revolves okay so undue fluctuation in the market definitely this could be a risk area if the fluctuations are more severe okay this may get more risk for us also inflation of course is a risk natural calamities once in a while this can come right so that was also calamity uh, a pandemic was a cal calamity for us right so definitely some cal uh, uh, some risk would be there it was a high degree of risk for all of us but this could be this could be coming as once in a while right once in a while, it's not a regular one political risk i don't think for given the project it can it will have we discuss on day first right i don't think that it will have very high uh, impact on the project or project outcome i feel uh, intern risks are more severe or more important for us to try to identify analyze okay and calculate the risk also so that we can have something on rmc risk management okay council for us or risk management policy also time related risk we all we understand if at all we have assigned time we have already seen the port chart also okay to the extent uh, there is variance is there it would it can pose a risk for us technical risk when i say technical risk it is nothing but maybe a lack of technical knowledge or the the, the specific te needed technology is not available okay so non availability of the technical factors okay could could be posing the risk also financial risk very common so to the extent of shortage of capital financial is nothing but to the extent of deficit of finance being made available okay where we need to adjust where we need to uh, contain okay within within the within the uh, uh, scope of our my project could be definitely risk legal risk if why legal risk could be there suppose we we try to do something which are not ethical which are not legal which are not within the judiciary which are not permissible some activity some project okay certainly you will always carry and you have a clear understanding that if this this act is not legal this act is some specific set of act is not legal certainly you carry the legal risk resource risk so resource is nothing but other than the technology other than the finance okay other any other resource say for example quality control major okay what we discuss right now right if that uh, qc is not made made available right so in definitely is a risk it is it is definitely a, some amount of risk resource risk it may impact also manpower okay human resources we have the manpower but but, but suppose we have we, we have adjust we are compromised on the the specific manpower for for my requirements okay again definitely you are working with that manpower with high level of risk also okay so we are trying to adjust his skills okay we, we are aware that okay he doesn't he doesn't possess the required skills taking your skills right still if you are continuing certainly we are going with the resource risk also then against that risk once you understand the perception of the risk what should be your actionable okay so this is the rmp risk management process what we have in the broad way so what what could be your actionable and again a risk management part could be a part of your business case only is not no way different friends so while we are putting up all our projections or the perception of the of the of the outcome of the success at the same time you should have enough scope for risk management also okay that's what could be developed so first identify and develop a risk management plan how you are going to address if such risk comes or if risk, if such risk occurs crops up how you are going to manage that risk 
prepare risk register is nothing but list down all the possible risks which could be identified by you right you are aware that okay if this goes wrong what level of risk is it can come right so you have to prepare the list of all the possible risks and identify all the possible risks within that risk register list out all the possible risks which you may come which you have identified then give priority prioritize the risk depending on the quality risk analysis and of course quantity also to what extent this would be impacting adversely on your project and project outcome based on that you can prioritize some risk maybe uh, we, we cannot call it as a risk also somewhere some issue could be there okay based on the priority based on the criticality of the risk you have to prioritize implement risk analysis risk analysis is nothing but friends your own exercise okay uh, for analyzing the impact of the risk and to what extent this can impact what way this can impact financially technically quality wise and so as so as not to meet the requirements of the buyer okay that you have to analyze and put up the analysis require uh, 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 exercise for you assess the risk friend. once you analyze this it's not a one-time measure as a part of your monitoring the project on a regular basis you need to assess look at the risk possible risk continuous it is going to be a continuous ongoing uh, example looking at the vulnerability look at the, your product how vulnerable it is right if it is not vulnerable again so your rmp would be very very easy please look at the vulnerability and seriousness of the product and the activity also say for example uh, your project may uh, may involve some hazardous activities explosive activity okay so definitely the degree of vulnerability is very very high from that point of view your risk management uh, measures could be very critical very very apt very very aptly done even if despite the fact that you you may have to shell out good money good amount of money expenditure also right so this is something called as your strategy as an rmp Another, another a very interesting concept friends so again this well known concept in uh, in uh, pmp so let's have a look let me share i hope you can see the see the slide friends this is something on emv emv expected monetary value so again related to the expected returns right so how we work it out friends okay so this is a comparative analysis very interesting uh, uh, um, technique for you okay so emv uh, is a decision tree to calculate a future outcome okay which may or may not happen may or may not happen if it happens then it is an opportunity okay positively it is opportunity if it doesn't happen this can be a risk negative value okay so what I feel, uh, again, a very simple understanding of EMV is, is the value of each possible outcome. Possible outcome, which is multiplied by its probability. Okay, the outcome is there. So what is the extent of, what is the possibility that it's happening? What is the probability that it will happen? Okay, the probability or the possibility of its occurrence. Okay, that's what we work it out. I suppose uh, if I put an example before you, okay, the, your understanding could be clear. As for EMV is concerned, let's look at the example. Okay, so for friends, we are here and we are very intelligent PM project manager. So we need to look at the choices also. Look at it. Okay, so we have choice. Fun. Uh, I need a software. I need a software, right? So if I buy software, there's a cost. If I don't buy the cost, but if I make my own software, there's a cost. Look at the relative cost now. So these are the probabilities of happening into EMV. So if I buy software which will cost me around one lakh, example, one lakh seventy-five thousand. If it is the case, then there are twenty-five percent chance that it will be unfit. If it is proved to be unfit, then its negative impact is ninety thousand. Okay, and there are seventy-five percent chance that it will be fit. If it is fit, then there is no negative impact. So you have two ways. The way uh, of looking at it okay if you buy software at that cost 
what could be probability. Then on the other hand, other hand, if you make software of your own, what is the cost that will that will cost you less? But but what are the chances then? What are the probabilities before you? There are 55% chances that it will be unfit. If it is unfit, the negative impact will be 1 lakh 10,000. Please try to look at relatively friends. Okay, there is, no, there, is, there is no decision which is right or wrong. Okay, but it is a relative uh, 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 approach of each of you, right? The way you look at it. And 45% chance is that it will be fit. If it is fit, suitable, then it has no impact. That's why I'm posing a question before you, friends. Okay, whether you should buy or whether you should make your own software. Because for any uh, any decision, there are two counter uh, counter impacts. Counter impacts. You have to look at it at a relatively relativity. Okay, this is something called as EMV. EMV. Okay, so this just to make it uh, 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 more clear, I put the example for you also. Okay, so with this, let's go ahead. Give me one second, friends. Once we understand uh, uh, the risk and uh, the quality assurance, etc., one more point, friends. I feel uh, this also quite pertinent for us when we're looking at this the, at our uh, team and team performance. So one one more quality we must have, characteristic we must have, expertise we must have, is to keep the team motivated. Okay, in a high degree, in a high degree of motivation also. Okay, how it should happen? So how you, you can do that, friends? So to understand it well. I Uh, sir, can I pose a question here? Yeah, please, sir. Uh, sir, just go back from this, the same slide, na? the last uh, slide. Which please. one? EMV? EMV. EMV? Yeah, one second. Yeah. Yeah. Give me one second. Make or buy one. How it. how a professional uh, PM should act or work in such condition? Uh, what would be your opinion, sir, in this case? <laughs> very difficult, very difficult to tell you because because no, uh, it's, more uh, difficult. it's more difficult for uh, for student like us, you know. No, no, it's okay. I, 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 okay, fine. Because I have, to, okay. I have put yeah, I have put the board the facts before you, sir. I have a say here uh, because <laughs> uh, seeing the facts. It's feasible to go with the uh, buying the software and not making own software because it has a more chance of. Uh, uh, yeah, because uh, yeah, very likely said because it has a it, it has a probabilities. I, these are not the resultants. These are these are not the results. There, there is a possibility of either of the thing will happen, sir. Sir, uh, uh, sorry to again uh, you know come uh, uh, very clear. But an experienced professional, uh, yes. a PM like you, yes, yes. like whatever, 15, 20 years into PM uh, uh, pro, uh, uh, project management, uh, what is an experienced project manager should do? I mean, say probabilities we understand, contingencies we understand, uh, we understand the, re the net result uh, also. But I mean, you know, if this is the case, what uh, uh, what uh, experienced project manager should do? I mean, I just want your opinion. Okay, my opinion? Yes. Okay, uh, and this will be purely personal opinion, which I would advise to my customer that yeah. I will make my software more safer Good. for me. Since my <laughs> that friend was, has also that asked. was even, even my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> that was even my Great. opinion. Thank you so much. Because, but otherwise, because, my friend because has asked the question. It's very difficult, sir. There is no I'll, one line. Where... I'll just justify with two answers. Please, uh, please. I mean, why yeah. I would prefer to go with make software because A, the cost is low. Okay, we are saving almost 25,000 rupees. I mean, this is now in thousands. If it is in lakhs, then 25 lakhs is a huge money. 
second uh, the chance of uh, being unfit you know it's just double uh, compared to if i Perfect. buy and if I, if i make okay Very well. but 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 if i if it fits then i save a hell lot of money and uh, i mean not only that even i can market this software perfect perfect very well so again uh, it will all depend that what could be solution for you so you have to work it out that if this one if the, the option a happens okay and uh, if it is unfit then what could be solution for me so you should be ready with that negative impact what i'm saying sure. that either way I, in first choice if it happens to be negative in second choice if it happens to be negative what is the way out this should be right. your own strategy to come out of that but again I, let me very frank with you that there is no neither right or wrong answer for it correct correct this is my correct. this is my solution this is yes. my way of thinking and right. let me tell you friends this is an actual study this this has been a case study for me so i'm okay and that's why i have told you immediately that i suggested my customer for going for a, a, a second option yeah thank you, you should not thank buy you. better to make your soft, own software if he's capable he went for yeah. it and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully he gain hopefully he's gain okay thank so you, i uh, i'm Listen. i'm very curious to know over here that uh, uh, with the investment of just 25000 we are also getting uh, the chances uh, let's say have the chances more uh, 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 in uh, getting successful if we go with the option of buying the software because first option you mean first option yes yes first option okay. because you are with just uh-huh. yeah it is your perception you could be right because that is where your real skill because see these are the options available okay the and these are the option against option the probability should be well in analyzed for you no the because the as a normal is like business 50/50. man sorry in the second yeah. option the probability is like 50/50 i would say or even less not 50 50 because uh, 55 uh, percent is the unfit one and 45 is the chance because uh, uh, the uh, to me the very sound decision is like go with the most uh, chance of good probability and, and absolutely, uh, the, abs- absolutely fine i am not i respect your decision definitely yes this may work out no 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 i i i just want to understand why because uh, uh, yours and there was another one who said that uh, second option is the best option to uh, uh, that you both would go so that is why i just want to understand because uh, you you guys are more experienced than me so i am I'm, i'm just curious to know that why second option because we are seeing 55% is the uh, unfit chance in the second option and 45 is the fit chance abdul i'll abdul i'll answer you here why i chose make software the reason being uh-huh. there are three things you know first cost benefit second uh, the chances you know it's not uh, comparatively buying a software 25% and making a software 55% right so failing uh-huh. is 50% uh, i mean you know it's just double right but if i'm successful okay if i'm successful i build what i have saved money i have uh, i have my own software which is exactly uh, to my fitment and third thing is that a future you know the same software i can sell it across to different vertical i mean you know to the same vertical different uh, customers i mean you know if it is allowed by the management yeah and uh, and the fourth thing is that uh, the team uh, which was working on this making a software uh, that that you know the the the, the most important the most critical is a, is a man management uh, look at their kind of confidence and their uh, uh you know quality of work that will be 100% improved so they are again uh, they are again uh, you know from my team so the team would be united unified and at the same time they will be excited to do something more better you know next time so i would put this four points why i would prefer make software as an option perfect so somewhere uh, somewhere my philosophy was same maybe slightly different but i could put it on the same way i have given my option or thankfully this was successful but yes you can take it uh, not only chance so that's why for us important is that if uh, uh, looking at the negative ch- or rather negative impact what could be impact we understand that okay what are percentages whether we have a way out based on the possible negative impact whether we have way out whether we, we can negate whether we can you can say uh, 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 reduce the negative impact if we have that philosophy 
we can, you, you should come out of this. Otherwise, okay. there's a related. Answer. That's why I said, I'm again, I'm saying this could be a perception of yourself, your own analysis, the way you look at it. Okay. That's why I feel very honestly, none of, none of neither of this, uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 this is wrong or right. You always see that. Uh, just want to add something. Yes, please, sir. Uh, so I'm working, uh, uh, working inside this make software wala company. Oh, great. So I am aware ki what what is the stages uh, we would like face difficulties. But, perfect, perfect, perfect. But 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 the thing is the time constraint. Time constraint. Yeah, for for making a software, it is not like uh, it will be done in five days or month or great. Like a Absolutely year. Absolutely correct. It's a question but, of time. Urgency. Yeah, that's what uh, I was about to come because I'm also involved in uh, such uh, projects where uh, software developments are there. And this goes on like months and months and months. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, one more point you have added that also I have analyzed how much was the urgency. If right. Possibility is that if, if, the, if there is no urgency at all, you can take a standard. Okay, I, I, I will make attempt to make my own software, but you may be compelled to buy the software provided your urgency. So one more one more element of time. One more time, uh, emergency, urgency, also there. You, you can look at from that point of view also, not only for the relative cost or relative risk. Is that it? Great. Correct. Thank you. Sir, I'd just like to add uh, my experience. Yes, uh, I, If I have a plan in, in such case, I would initially study the pros and cons of both. This uh, would help me what... the perfect way because my time, my dependency, my financial cost I'm saving, but as earlier the sir told that time is a part again my dependency against my success so pros and cons will help us to understand either to buy the software or either to make the software very well said very well said very well said so uh, the decision uh, sufferance uh, uh, this op to choose the option is not easy easy yeah yeah it's Correct. not easy that so it's it's not an uh, it, there there are, so there is no free, uh, uh, right uh, in the sense of multiple choice question for you Wherein you find that okay, this choice is correct, which may not be correct. That's why very and this very very live study I put before, you, except that I have not mentioned the name of the customer. When I say it is one lakh seventy five thousand, this could be seventeen lakhs also. I know, but just uh, uh, I wanted to put that my own exercise before you, for your understanding of EMD. This again, so as a PM friends, such a strategic decision you may be required to take up. But as my friend has said, you need to look at it very very uh, granularly very in detail deep uh, analysis need to be done for you great thank you sir thank you okay so uh, we are talking about the motivation friends right so a very interesting uh, so uh, before i uh, uh, instead of my explaining what motivation is okay let's look at what guru says on this motivation one second let me uh, share Friend, today being the last day, okay, so I would like to request for your extra time. Will it be okay? So as I said, uh, I don't want to hurry uh, to complete my syllabus or whatever content. So we have some time, but still, I would definitely request for, for your extra time. Yes, sir, so definitely please. fine, sir. Yeah, thank please you. Go. Oh, great. Thank you. Yes, sir. So in another very interesting factor, friends, uh, uh, um, sometimes, sometimes I felt that this should be combined with uh, the, 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 the team. But again, I find felt that this could be appropriate time to understand what could be motivation. Friends. So again, you may have your own, own language, own analysis to see motivation for the team. I feel that uh, a motivation could be an inner force in within you. So what is something, an inner feeling or inner force you have, power within you, right? So you, as a PM, definitely needs to motivate team for performance. So on no other, no other uh, uh, purpose. You need to uh, stay in the in the project and see that the performance is sustainable. Performance is done, being done on a constant basis. Okay. So motivation is definitely here. So I feel what is performance is a, is a, is the equation of both your ability and your commitment both. Okay. So this will define your performance in terms of the motivation. Okay, so to understand better, friends, there are three theories. Very, very interesting. Very interesting, I must say. And you need to look at it and analyze and let me know whether it, it, this theory will stand today also. Okay, let's look at it. 
first Maslow's theory, very well known. I'm quite sure all my uh, senior colleagues must have seen that. Very, very well known theory. Very popular theory. Okay, so let's see what is what Maslow says. Very well known theory for the historical well known. Very old, 19, as old as of 1943, I suppose. Okay, I suppose it has some wide application even in today's time also. So uh, Maslow says, Abraham Maslow says, there are uh, uh, five basic needs, okay, which you need to fulfill so that you could be adequately motivating the people with you, the team member with you, okay. So what are going to be uh, these needs? Okay, it's needs theory. Look at it, friends. There is it's a pyramid, okay, huge pyramid, but goes on tapering also, right? So that's what it, it shows the shape of the needs. It goes on more specialized, more classified also. First, look at it, friends. Of course, basic needs, all of us, we understand. We must fulfill these basic needs, maybe food, shelter, or whatever, uh, to sustain life, right? Clothing also. Once he's satisfied, so he, his, his expectation of needs goes up. He also wants to be secured, safe. So that security and safety needs to be provided by you as a need. Okay, as a need. So when I say safety, of course, safety of his workplace, safety of his ambience and safety with the team also. Security uh, could be security, a basic security of his, uh, 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 of his position, of his job. So whatever, for whatever purpose you have, uh, you have chosen the team members, you should be secure, fairly secure, right? Also, secured in his place. He must have, so there should not be any fear into his work area, okay? He should be adequately secure into the ambience, okay? No, there should not be any element which will make him insecure, should be there, right? Then socialization, friends, very interesting. Okay, when you go up, he would like to be a member of the society. So as you all of us know that there is a there is a well-known term which says we are, all of us we are social animals, right? So he is also part of the society around him. Which society? It's the society within which he is he is, he is working. Your society, right? He should be he should be given adequate socialization, adequate social to be a an integral part of that society group team should be your partner definitely you should make him aptly social animal social element of it recognition okay it's not over friends okay so you have you have you have chosen him you have you have onboarded him you are giving the package whatever way it's not sufficient nowadays you also need to see that at times not all but those who elements who are per outperforming who are who are who are showing extra performance out of box performance should be recognized should be recognized isn't it adequately aptly recognized so we call this as a something called as rnr rewards and recognition program so all the all the top management uh, uh, institutes they definitely they have corporates they have something called rnr rewards and recognition so for all extra efforts okay uh, smart work he's doing should be adequately recognized in maybe in some physical way maybe in upgradation monetary way or any award whatever way Right? It should be recognized. And lastly, friends, ultimately he, he, he comes to that point. So something called self-actualization. So you look at it. That what way where I reach? Have I have I have I achieved what for what purpose I have been there? Okay. So you should give a feeling. You must somewhere that that would be combination of his own satisfaction and that satisfaction or actualization you are combining from your end also as an PM. Okay, you need to uh, uh, you need to uh, 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 invest some extra time for it. Where he has reached, okay, is he whether he is he's, uh, he's, he has ultimately reached where he was supposed to be. Something called self feeling of self actualization. So very well known theory, friends. I suppose uh, Maslow's theory has has a very wide okay and valid application today also. You can look at it, friend. You look at your own team. Are you involving yourself in a, in a gradual manner, stepwise manner to fulfill that? For all your team members, okay, you fulfill his needs or not? Where we feel, where where is the shortage? Where is where is the you can say a, a gap? Right? So that's what Maslow's theory of hierarchy of needs. Let's go ahead. Herzberg theory, okay, Mr. Frederick Herzberg again is very old, okay, as of as old as of 1960. 
so he has he has identified a person okay and he has put two separate categories of something on need and motivation also what he feels that there are two factors either it is hygiene factors or motivators okay i feel both are independent but affect the personal differently okay so we need to provide first hygiene factors isn't it hygiene factor should be first one basic needs as we have seen okay maybe uh, to provide him safety provide him ambience provide him all the equipments tools guidance training there are hygiene factors without hygiene factor okay he could be absolutely unsuitable non productive that is your responsibility also so these are the basic needs for a person to avoid become dissatisfied in his job unless and until you provide the basic hygiene factors he could be dissatisfied demotivated also it will have very very severe impact on your roger friends and then thereafter harsbur says the motivators are also necessary for a person to be motivated so those those who want motivated those there is a there is a need for motivated only should be motivated that's what harsbur says okay you find out that okay fine this person is adequately performing or not performing at all he needs some extra efforts of motivating only should be motivated by putting some additional effort by you that's what harbus says the other factors two factors let's go ahead magregor's theory magregor's theory okay uh, this this is the x and y theory okay so what is theory x says he feels i had i have my own doubts whether uh, this would be definitely fit today's uh, today's days but still you have your own opinion he says as per theory x he says average worker is lazy non performer he needs supervision constant supervision okay so you need to follow authoritarian management style authoritarian always authority you must exert so you have to uh, you have to divide the people into 3x following 3x and then 3y what 3y says there are people who are self are working for self motivate needs no motivation extra motivation isn't it they are involved in their decision making very well okay they are well dedicated in taking the decisions and their their involvement also okay so you need to follow democratic management style so he, the uh, magregor says what way you have to divide your strategy in motivating okay so somewhere people uh, uh, following the theory x what you what should be your management style the way you should treat them and on theory y also uh, so he magregor has tried to put two distinct groups of people in the team right to to extremes to extreme okay so you need to tell i feel this may not work to that extent well okay we may not have a people with the two extremes right there could be some average class also that's my opinion as such so again uh, your treatment will change accordingly right that's what the magnigos says okay so let's go ahead friends so here i'm here to uh, um, uh, summarize what we have learned what we have discussed these three days right so these are all summarized just to uh, 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 in a nutshell brush up ourselves okay so what project management is all about what we have learned what we have discussed that definitely is an application of knowledge skills tools or techniques right to project activities so as to fulfill the requirements objectives and goal of the project specific project how this we accomplish this how we we come to an end of the satisfaction level or you can say the level of fulfilling the uh, the the set expectation okay through various application scope differently uh, integration and again in this integration and integration of the project management process through starting from initiation okay planning conceptualization then initiating then planning then actual execution and also to exercise monitoring and control and finally closing so uh, in this whole process friend we what we talked about uh, is is the overall process of change or is the change management also right so this change management is again uh, uh, will be possible through different techniques what we managed what we discussed to manage the people and also to equip and people processes products as well okay so uh, uh, there are uh, tools friend this is checklist not tools but just checklist okay there are pointers action pointers for you in the form of seven hours when we are really looking for some change to happen okay what are the seven hours simple i put seven hours okay so first hour is who raised this change request whether this has been initiated by the management okay as an as an well thought process that yes we need to move ahead so we have to 
we have to we have to raise uh, we have to make some changes to their raise or mostly this could be a requirement of the specific customer also reason need business need what is the reason behind the change why we would like to bring that change basic reason for this project okay what are the returns very important what are the returns we are expecting required from the changes this could come out of the uh, financial appraisal and non financial appraisal also right what are the risks involved we have talked about the risk okay identifiable risk or non identifiable risk different types of risk who is responsible to create test and implement the change precisely we given the responsibility friends who is responsible to create maybe stakeholder maybe uh, maybe a, a sponsor maybe equity holder investor or maybe your own management also okay given the responsibility to create test and implement the change definitely you are you are the person and uh, team person to implement the change right to happen what are the resources made available friend so these are the requirements maybe requirements of different kind okay financial resources non financial resources human resources type of technology type of equipment etc all the resources you need precisely you have worked it out and the relationship between the suggested change and other change you you must relate also what are the change you are going to happen what way this has this has a relationship with the other changes which has already happened historical changes historical changes what are the, what what way you are you are better off what way you have you could make it uh, the better change compared to the other changes also or what way you are making the changes as compared to the changes contemplated with other projects going on simultaneously also so you must look at the relationship what you have and you need to relate your, your performance with the other historical changes or the projects which are going on simultaneously also okay so these are the simple r's friends okay as a part of change management let's go ahead okay finally we will come to a formal understanding of the project close out okay so what are the circumstances where we can say yes uh, the project has fulfilled so we are close out so it's not abrupt different we need to understand what are the techniques of project close out it's not only uh, the close out of the program but the project close out also okay so let's look at the different approaches project inclusion what is project inclusion friends the approach says that i have fulfilled the purpose for which the project was launched is fulfilled so i need to formally include uh, i need to formally close out the project right is normal project extinction what is project extinction it means unfortunately we have launched the project there, there was good thinking good uh, conceptualization good defining also we have gone ahead also but at some point of time abruptly we find that this project has no value no future okay so there is no there is no reason to continue with the project so this can be abruptly close also or this can happen even though the customer has agreed customer given the project now customer wants no i don't want to i don't want you to continue also so that could be a sudden call from the customer also requiring you to close out the project is something a project extinction or in other words you find find that you can continue the project but you find that there is at this time it it doesn't have the validity this may become extinct outcome has extinct no value at all it would not stay in the time right so this could be also close out lastly good uh, and this is what today nowadays so we are talking about the the limited life of the project friends right so there is the, the start of the project and end of the project even though the project is being ended but not entirely friends so we are formally closing the project but it has it has some relationship this project is going to be integrated with another project isn't it that also will be closed out but not entirely closed out this project have a roots for or you can say a, a opening point for the another project this is something called a project integration also okay so this approach could be so some of the reason or approach then what we need to do friends at the time of close out we must have stakeholders meeting of acceptance ultimately acceptance. Uh, so can you repeat on the uh, project inclusion once please first one yeah yeah absolutely this is normal sir normal project so you are taking up the project responsibility and you are fulfilled so all the norms 
all the consideration, all the all the estimates have been done, and you come to a normal end. So for the purpose for which the project was launched is over. The purpose is over. Object has okay, been okay. So it's the uh, normal no, course. Uh, no, yeah, normal course of action. Okay. Inclusion. We call this as a project closure out of inclusion, right? Now we are discussing about the stakeholder okay. meeting. Very, very important. So ultimately, when the project is over, before we formally get uh, get it closed. Okay, we need to have a meeting of all the stakeholders. Okay, so there is something called a project punch list. Project project punch list. You you have to present it. You have to present the end result to the stakeholders. What way the response was given? What you you handle the responsibility? What are the takeaways? What is the outcome? Punch list specifically. Okay, this was given and this is what has been planned and this has been performed. Punch list. Key list, okay. That's what you have to uh, uh, submit and produce and present to the stakeholder. Then you also have a lessons learned, takeaways. What are takeaways from the out of the project? Okay. So here, what could be lessons? Evaluate the business case again. So whatever you have pro you have projected at that point of time in the form business case, you have to evaluate, re-evaluate again, right? Again, the business case also you have to evaluate the charter also. Please evaluate the project management plan. Very, very important actionable friends. So based on the charter, okay, project charter, what way you have pre prepared the project management plan? Okay, so you can evaluate it's a time that okay, these are this was my plan. This is what I have executed the plan also. Very meticulously. Okay. Then evaluate the project management methodology. Whatever now you can come out that what was your skill? What was your secret not secret but skill? What was your scope? What was the manner in which you have you have implemented the methodology? This could add to the success factor of the project. So you have to come up. Has been outcome. What has been success? That success could be attributed to the team, entire team. That team performance could reflect your performance, personal performance also. Okay, it's a real mirror for you. Also. Okay, so this is what all formal project closure for us. Okay, that's okay. Um, so this is a formally formal way we close out the project, not abruptly. Right? Let's go ahead. I know the time is running, friends, so I have taken some extra time from you. Okay, so there are two points what we need to discuss. Friends. One is, of course, one case study. Uh, which normally we discuss uh, so we'll just uh, uh, go through uh, that what way and fortunately let me share with you this is a project where i was very closely associated okay so it's a success story of the project so let's let's look into uh, the actual implementation and the success story and of course uh, i would like to touch base on uh, um, uh, the session on demand so we'll definitely discussing okay thank you okay one of my friend is leaving that thank you sir Fine. So we will be touch basing on something called agile technology also, right? So this is a thank you, ma'am, that she has put up the, the the topic. Definitely is very much in detail. Where I uh, normally have a lot of sessions, which definitely will will continue. But today's session, before we end, something interesting I would like to put before you. You know, in a, in a very yes, quick way. thank you. So before that, success story. Of course, uh, there are certain technical points, friends. So few of you may not understand. Give me one second. Me one second. Let me share one second. I hope you can see the slide. 
fine so this is a success story this is an actual case study of one of the project what have you handled as a team so uh, there are certain technical points which uh, i would i would try to explain but you can take the uh, and try to understand the spirit of the project not the technical aspects right so let's go ahead so this was the project friends so it was related to an integrated business process okay which definitely highlights the delivery and on time project completion look at the project also you'll understand what we have done so we worked for this customer client so uh, it's nothing uh, confidential so i can i can i can openly uh, uh, share with you so this was a tata company we were into building solution location was at chennai who was the end user so end use was for, as a to come up with a distribution center for hul hindustan unilever okay the system building system was used was butler project size to construct 49500 square meter duration given was friends was 180 days please remember this from the apple of drawings so this uh, uh, the duration started from the date of getting the approved drawings let's go ahead just have a look who is the customer friends you'll understand very old company tata blue scope okay what is their business so they used to lease the warehouse spaces okay to different customers so they wanted us to uh, construct that warehouse for them which they would give on the lease basis okay so that was their speciality so they used to offer highly customized services okay in the form of built to suit warehouses built to suit warehouses those were in the form of shared warehouses scope of work for us friends just uh, uh, just to understand for all of us so uh, my my activities involved right from designing to manufacturing then supply and erection of engineered steel building solution that was the solution of erecting sub of course supply okay engineering steel building for his customer what was his customer hindustan unilever limited which was a distribution center for hul look at the pre qualification stage not much just go through friends this you may you may find some technical terms also so uh, the project started with a pre qualification phase where we engaged the pre sales team with the customer and to understand better friends understand the specific requirement of the project also we suggested some optimized solution to meet the operation needs we also suggested something that how come we can add some quality okay so that that would meet a specific needs operation needs also so in that interaction meeting the team gauged that on time project complete friend please underline this what was the requirement requirement was for us to complete the project on time which was very critical and the decisive need of the project also that's what they are committed to hul in those deliver okay so team briefed the client that and end user on the enablers what is the enablers certain requirement from the customer before we go ahead with the project there were certain requirement from the customer also okay let's see what are the requirements okay so this was uh, the project 49500 square meter mega project was to be completed in 180 days from the date of getting the drawings management drawing look at the project schedule friends so the supply uh, uh, schedule was based on uh, the front load process this is the technical term front loading process okay i feel that the front load process will be more efficient okay and it will enhance its capability to complete the project okay within the committed lines this process leads to the higher adherence of on time delivery look at the erection schedule also that we had prepared the erection schedule looking at the innovative work methods most innovative high quality uh, methods like pod lifting okay mechanized at site which would reduce the overall erection time now let's look at friends what we have we, have, we wanted to have from the customer we asked the customer to 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 fulfill the pcc floor loading or pcc floor laying so we wanted to have pcc floor done by them and also the peripheral roads side roads side roads or 
the main roads connecting to the site. Okay, because we wanted to have um, easy movement of the equipment and safety also. Easy movement of equipment and material and also to enhance the site safety. We wanted to have security also. Okay, so that's what the schedule, that's the requirement which we put up to the customer. Look at look at the uh, look PMP, friends. That was our PMP, project management plan. Week wise, week wise, once the approval stage was given, then, then we are prepared our plan. You can see the date also. That was in December 2014. Look at the task which were listed down. Look at the one who was responsible for it. And then you can see the blue lines are the, are the uh, milestones. Blue lines are the milestones. Okay, friends, this is very easy. Uh, you can say this could be a benchmark for you or enabler for you also, template for you. Okay, based on your requirement, you can prepare likewise. So those were activity, preparation of shop drawings, fabrication, delivery and erection, step by step, stage by stage. Okay, let's go ahead. So look at the key features, what we have done. Scope clarity, okay. The scope clarity was was clear in the form of document, which is called a PIF. PIF. Project information form is nothing but a charter, friends. Project charter that provides uh, enough scope, okay, to very various teams also. That was precisely uh, 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 equipped with all the teams, sales team and project team. Approved package, of course. Okay, the engineering team ensured and our team, they have, they have received the on-time approval from the client. Approval package, of course, the, the package of deliverables as well as the funds also. Those were made, okay, made on time without major changes. One more facility, one more, you can say, specialization. Then project management. Of course, technical, you can go through. So whatever uh, deliverables we have, we have done, so it, it could reduce the cycle. We are, we are, we are, we are talking about the cycle time, right? So all of our actionable and strategy was that we could reduce the cycle time actually by not shifting the priorities. So Fred, this one more uh, a principle we followed that we are not shifting the priorities. Okay, all the priorities, what we decided we went as per the priorities, preferential. Module wise, Grid-wise sequential delivery happened to match the building erection sequence. So about the reporting friends, what we have seen, evaluation, there was weekly project uh, progress report, what we made it ready. So at every milestone, every active stage, we understood that where we are moving. And there were no last minute okay surprises, no gold plating, no gold plating was done. So there was always stakeholder preference. One more, one more, very, very important. There was always involvement of the stakeholders, their support. It was extremely effective during the project tenure, entire project tenure. It was very effective. Okay, let's go ahead. So some uh, technical points, election methodology, support from the customer, etc., etc. So as a conclusion, you can see, friends, key points. Key points, success part, better scope clarity, internal working processes and policy full fit. Entire kit was made available. Okay, working was without shifting the priorities. Standardization well done. Standardization was the quality management part. QA part, quality assurance part. Proper material handling, stocking procedures. Detailed pre execution module planning of the project. And monitoring, constant monitoring performance which has really resulted in the on time delivery of the material. And I discussed about the stakeholder engagement, very effective communication. Normally that doesn't happen, but yes, we were very sure. Okay, let's go ahead. So this is what, uh, um, what we have done. Those who are technical uh, persons, they'll understand. This was a large column free space for efficient warehousing operations. Look at the beams, jack beams at integer column locations which we are erected. So look at the customer feedback friends. Very happy to share with you. This is what customer has given feedback. We ask for it. 
on time completion okay built to suit distribution centers but then the project is completed in a systematic way and up to our complete satisfaction okay so this is a close out meeting friend okay this customer feedback came in a close out meeting first a uh, project close out on time completion of the project is a good demonstration of how the company integrated the processes delivered outstanding experience to us which is difficult to replicate okay that's was the feedback friends so that was the whole study thank you so we come to this uh, uh, level. of course anyway i'm going to share this with you no issue okay friends so with this way we come to the last session small session okay what, what? yes sir So on a public demand or MIMS demand, so uh, I'm really delighted to put before you is quite in detail. So those who are specialized background of agile there, but my uh, my intention is to make you aware as to how this technology within the PM, okay, how is different, how this how this can be significantly done. Let me share with you. Give me one second. I know I'm taking your extra time, but it's really pertinent to make you understand. And this is going to be a bonus bonus session for you. Okay, friends, let's understand. So for those who are, may not be aware, so some basics about Agile. So why it, it's very pertinent in today's date, today's processes. Okay, so Agile will help the teams to deliver the value deliver the value is the value is the outcome okay to their customers fast and effectively okay it so as to make the lot easier also so it is the, it is related to the cust understanding the customer expectation and the way we look at the deliverable the actionables okay how we can do that so this technology or this concept is based on the values and principle but this this is not this is not any um, uh, bombarding of any methodology or philosophy as such. Okay, so it, it is it is a framework. It is a mental framework, technological framework, software framework also. And of course, this is embedded with a certain beliefs, which team used to make decisions. Okay, this is a collection, a quality collection of the beliefs, which our teams will use for making decisions. Okay, so it's it's my very strong conviction, friends, that the principle of Agile will help you to guide your team on the right path, always on the right path. Even though you may not be aware, you are, you are unsure of the next step, but what is step, what is stage of the project you are working, okay, it will give you clarity and will give you the right path for your work. Okay, let's go ahead. So this is the overall, you can say, universe of Agile. We have seen most of them where our responsibility lies. And these are the actionable friends. Okay, so this could be a, a designing, planning, then take a review, then we deploy. Okay, before deploying or maybe after deploying, we can test. Then we develop once again. And then the whole, when the whole development of the software is done, then we could launch the launch product. Somewhere this is a journey, gradual but very definite journey of any agile technology. Okay, let's go ahead. So again, uh, just to understand friends, so agile uh, technology refers to a methodologies which are focused on iterative development, innovative development, new ideas coming up, right? So it speaks of, really speaks of the, some quality, uh, 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 quality uh, deployment, iterative development, where process and solutions occur through continual collaboration. Remember the words, friends. Okay, so there's a continual, continuous collaboration based impact among the cross six functional team all the teams so there is a there is an effective collaboration of you of a project manager okay with the entire team cross function team also we in this agile friends it is really surprising that we may not be following a well defined and strict plan there is no scope for the strict plan 
okay but agile teams everybody in the team they focus on the continual improvement and of course addition of efficiency also okay there's something called a sprints which i think many of you must be aware okay which speaks which speaks of specific tasks or deliverable in a time frame which are fixed which are box in a time frame they are called a sprint okay uh, so each sprint is last for not too much every space sprint is a small but quality to deli deliverable deliverable all period maybe for two to four weeks but again this depends on the product and development typically the sprints and different sprints develop okay that will depend depend on the product to be developed at the end okay so what i feel in in this uh, this development software development friend agile transform the ways which teams uh, structure processes the way teams structure processes they have transformed the ways definitely yes earlier uh, there were some software friends which many of you must be knowing also just for example earlier before implementing of agile okay the software development sdlc okay so there are other pro approach like waterfalls it was there right many of you might be knowing all which was focused on the delivering software to a linear and process there is scopes for such a linear and more rigid process in agile that's why i mentioned there is no such a hierarchy no rules no procedures which needs to be followed okay so this something called as sdlc okay sdlc a uh, software development life cycle this sdlc in agile they focus on the breaking the process we now we we have element of wbs okay so they'll break the process into manageable actions nothing but it speaks of wbs effectively work breakdown structure okay which could be again improved integrated till it reaches its primary goal i'm saying primary goal first immediate goal right so this is a, a, a wbs and integration would be a constant process in agile what matters us okay is more important to deliver the best possible results best results that's what we aim for in agile okay not about the rules and framework of rules procedures let's go ahead so friends broadly uh, uh, was uh, how it started so uh, in the uh, there are there was a group of 17 engineer they created agile okay as a history so they focus on building an efficient foundation to manage the projects any project very very in efficient manner okay so since inception uh, uh, there are various changes friends just let me sh share with you agile is technology is not stagnant is not stagnant so there are lot of improvements lot of changes lot of advancement which are happening nowadays also that why agile is is uh, ahead of time i feel ahead of time right uh, so basically friends i feel within the structure of agile there are four core values and 12 principles as of now today right that we will try to uh, uh, just understand we are not we are not i'm not going to describe everything each and every value and each and every principle has a lot of description but it goes for few days also but for us at this stage we understand what are the principles so that agile has become today which many of you will agree that it has become a globally accepted mindset okay in order to efficiently managing the project plan okay we understand what are the four values first agile values individuals and interactions or processes so here there is more scope for individuals and more of interactions rather than the processes and so many you can say uh, conflicting tools rigid tools as such so you have you have processes you have the technical tools but it's the team which determines the project success that's what is a core value of the core value of the agile first value then working software or comprehensive documentation we believe that documentation should be there i know within within the framework of uh, of the project we need the common documentation right but what is more important is the software which is working the basic reason software development was slow and effective was so much of technical specification drawings requirements etc 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 right but agile requirements are presented as a user story there are so many user stories right which helps to speed up the process there is a scope for more of user stories rather than the documentation in a comprehensive manner okay next customer collaboration again so you will find it more more repeatedly here okay so compared to the more formal structure contractual negotiation what we believe in agile is customer collaboration 
customer collaboration. That's what's going to be one of the core values. Then responding to change or following a plan. Definitely, yes. What we are, we are responsible, friends, is that we're responsible for the changes expected. So that responding to the change, expected change, is more important rather than following a track, following a path, following a plan. So these are four core values. So based on that, there are sort of principles we'll look, quickly look at. So friends, I think uh, um, this one picture is self-sufficient, is a self-explanatory asset to understand, isn't it? So these are all team members. So you can see a lot of uh, discussion, uh, interaction and collaboration happening. Okay, so uh, let's look at the principles, friends. So these are the agile manifesto principles. Okay, what is the purpose? Why it is important? Where they will focus? As you can see, and you will find the, the, the common theme with all the principles. Efficiently delivering valuable software. Then embracing change. We must we we'll just look, isn't it? There are uh, there are six, seven hours. Why, why, how we need to embrace and get connected with the changes required working collaboratively and of course prioritizing the customer needs we need to give utmost priority to the customer needs right so based on this let us have a look quick look first principle friends priority is to satisfy the customer how through early and continuous delivery of the valuable software that software carries a very huge value high value that's why we need to continuously get in touch and deliver it okay to satisfy the customer and continuous delivery ongoing delivery right so this is what is the first principle i give the something called as mvp also minimum viable product what we need to build here minimum viable product please remember the term okay under that customer satisfaction mvp minimum viable product yes please welcome changing requirements there could be ongoing requirements coming up we must welcome within the within the uh, uh, you can say uh, uh, mind share of agile okay even though this could be at, at a later stage also friends later stage of development subsequent also okay not abruptly but some requirements may come up you should welcome it that's what agile processes say so agile processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage we must see that how best advantage customer will have competitively so that doesn't matter some developments may come up you have to do it right you have to you have to address that changes third deliver working software frequently i'm saying working software working software is not final software friends it's not a final software but working software to do to see the changes to evaluate the changes and then again working on it okay here again we see the pdca cycle right working somewhere okay maybe from a couple of weeks to a couple of months also more frequently with a preference to the shorter time scale so every working software will have a shortest possible time scale so that again wbs working software is nothing but we have broken down into some component we are working on it before we go for the final delivery okay so every working software will have very short time scales i mentioned here software development teams work in sprints with the set time frame between two weeks to four weeks as short as two weeks also business people and developers must work. very important friends this is this is the this is a forum where it is expected in agile that all those businesses they understand the business well they can analyze the business well those people those teams okay should work jail they're working with the developers those who are trying to analyze and working on the software okay so throughout the project okay so many i many times i have seen friends so they are they are the you can say a, a very close team closely knitted team of business people and the developers team definitely should okay so you can so teams can prioritize their regular meetings as well but they should meet and work together throughout the project throughout the project build projects around motivated individuals another very very you can say very very novel principle of the agile so build the project around the motivated individuals give them environment enough environment enough scope and support they need and trust them to get the job done very very pinpointing points very very pinpointing philosophy right build the projects around those individuals who are motivated for doing it give them the environment sufficient healthy ambience and support they need 
and trust them to get the job done. Okay, so that's what is going to be the uh, not only uh, the agile technologist but team leader or project manager looking after or heading the agile technology is that's what you need. Okay, as I mentioned, not necessarily focusing on the how something is done but more efforts on what and why we should try to find out the answer as such. Okay, so the delivery team, okay, who is the one who determines how through the process, how it happened. Let's go ahead. The most efficient and effective method of conveying informal affairs. I believe, I believe that, okay. How it happens, because whenever the, the uh, within a development team, when there is an interaction, conversation, which is happening face to face, which is going to be, which has been proved to be most efficient and effective method of conveying. So whatever development going on, okay, it should have face to face, around around, uh, 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 okay, on the table, over the table, OTC, over the table, face to face call should happen. Okay, so what we mean, I mean here, this principle is applied in the software teams through the daily meetings, brainstorming session, sprint planning meeting, and so on. Different and different demos happening, functional demos happening, and pair programming. Pair programming is the programming happening within the small teams. So within the team, within the team, you have small teams who are engaged with the programming. This is something called a pair program. Okay. So this is one more uh, uh, feature, principle. Working software is the primary. Again, I'm coming to the same point. So this is the primary measure of your progress. First stage is develop the software, which is working software. You find something happening, which is not the final one. Which is not the final one. That's why I mentioned here. The software teams will design and release the minimum valuable features, minimum valuable product, instead of fully fledged, full fledged features. Okay, so you get feedback on the working software and go on validating the product when you go for building the final software solution as such. That's why I feel it. This makes a agile team to have capacity to adapt the change. Whatever changes are required, you can you understand and you adapt for the change. You accept the change and gain a competitive advantage. Competitive advantage. What we expect, right? Let's go ahead. Broadly, as feel all the processes which are built up in the Agile front, they, 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 they attempt to promote the sustainable development. It has a long-term feature, sustainable feature. Okay. So all those who are who are involved into this, this Agile could be sponsors, could be stakeholders, could be team of developers and ultimate users. Okay they should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. Harmony, this speaks of the harmony among them, right? This will go a very long way on a sustainable basis. This is what the Agile processes look for, right? Very important uh, in principle, I suppose. Let's go ahead. Continuous attention to technical excellence. It's not in in in, 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 a, in, a, in a haphazard manner. Okay, within the team, even though we are working on the working software, we must have continuous attention to technical excellence and good design analysis. That's what will, will lead to the agility. What we look for the agility in with the agile friends. So continuous attention for attaining this excellence, technical excellence, and to come out with the good quality design. I mentioned, I I am uh, highlighted also. Okay. So Agile technology promotes the continuous attention to technical excellence and a good quality design as well. Good quality design of the product. Simplicity difference. Uh, it's, a, it's a benchmark. It's a benchmark. It's a, it's a buzzword. Okay. So simplicity, it's the art of maximizing the amount of work not done. Okay, is essential. Simplicity, the way, the, the, the manner in which you do it, the maximum the amount of the work which is not done or you can say unattended work okay so you can do it maximize it, it okay add some productivity and, and do it in a simple way without adding complexity into the work. that's what it says okay next best architectures requirements and the designs emerge from self-organizing teams your own teams friends self-organizing teams okay these are made up of the people who are who are closely knit Closely connected people. Okay, so this is a team of uh, a well organized, self organized, self motivated, and self organized coming together voluntarily. Okay, they will they will come out with the best architecture of this agile technology, 
best requirements, meeting the requirement, and also to come up with the best design, useful design, technical design as such. Okay, this is what is the theme of very important as a book. So I suppose I, you can see here I mentioned. So uh, what we have seen is agile team are the autonomous groups, voluntary groups in an organization which have full control within their small teams also on the project. That's why they are capable to take ownership of such areas. Whatever could be the complex project, they are quite capable. So these are known to be a most efficient agile technologist, project manager having agile technology as a specialized tool. Okay. And the last one, regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective. Okay. So these are brainstorming session friends. Okay. So you need to think of that, how this can be made better, effective. Then you have to fine tune and then you have to adjust your behavior accordingly. So you have scope of correcting yourself intermittently, intermittently at regular intervals, regular phases. Okay. So you have a reflection on your own, own mind. Okay. You, you, you introspect yourself, how you can become more effective than tunes. Okay. And you have to adjust your behavior, your, your, your uh, techniques accordingly. That's why fine, uh, finally it says that uh, it, the idea is to have sessions where the team reflects on their own performance and discuss the ways management and technical skills can be improved forever. Okay. So friend, this is all about a uh, very in a simple way. I'm not going to, there are so many complexities also. Okay. Agile technology per se as such is, is uh, for understanding is very, very complex, but for application is simple. Once you understand, okay, that complex and features. Uh, the implementation and your involvement as a PM could become easier. And I follow. And same is the spirit which you can pass on to your team also. Okay. So this is what all about the Agile Technology Friend in, in the nutshell. Thank you so much. And special thanks to ma'am for giving opportunity. Of course, it's very much in detail. Sir, thank you. Thank you for explaining, sir. Thank you, friends. Okay. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry I have taken uh, your almost additional 45 minutes, right? So, of course, for some value addition. And uh, thank you so much. Over to you. What are your questions you have, friends? Sir, is this agile technology only used for uh, software development projects? Yes, of course. Of course absolutely. Inherently. Only, right? Yeah, inherently. There are so many so other areas not... also, but largely, yes. Okay. This approach. Uh, approach has converted into that methodology, what we do. Sir, so in agile, like uh, it is very flexible, and in between, if any changes are asked, it is, it, uh, it is same as flexible, flexible man. Absolutely. So, but this is the team who is working on that project. Those team must be facing challenge that in, in between some changes are coming repeatedly. That's why the selectivity is a challenge, madam. Selectivity to to make to to incorporate the team members is a challenge. Not that everybody okay uh, uh, who could be a part of the team. So it is a challenge for us if we happen to be a. Uh, a very efficient project manager handling the agile projects is a challenge for us to uh, as to to choose very appropriately who could be the matching fitting team member is really a challenge i have faced that okay okay and sir uh, so this agile is is it a software wherein uh, each and every steps are getting mentioned and in between any changes there's a coming framework, yes there through. is a standard framework is definitely there so that's okay. what we touch base but again there are so many other tools also so it's okay. open Agile philosophy is quite open for changes. Okay, sure, sir. You can deduct, you can edit, you can incorporate few other steps also. But the it, the, the steps what we the principle what we discuss it happened to be a benchmark for any any uh, agile project technology. Okay, sir. Sir, so similar to agile technology, is there any other technology which uh, which helps uh, in the field like electronics manufacturing? The frame for framework where the yeah, agile different. technology use. I'm yeah, the field there, but uh, but not to match with agile, sir. Okay. So there's no there's no reason to compare with. Them. There are so many other tools. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Python is okay. there. So many. Uh, there are so many. So my colleague, you are aware. Python is there. Okay. So Hadoop is there. There are so many. Depending on the data, depending on the the challenge given to you, how to process, how to analyze, and work out the solution. It all depends, sir. So basically, it means in short, this this kind of technology used only for in the T company where software development is involved, right? Absolutely, yes, correct, correct. Okay, correct. So is Prince technology something similar? I'm sorry. 
Sprint technology is it something similar to Agile? Is a part of it. Is a smaller okay. component, sir. Uh, I'm okay. not talking about the Sprint technology. We're talking about the Sprint is a, is a small scale uh, working software. Sprint and software itself is is a Java is a part of Java. Right. This is Java software. That is all different, sir. Okay. It's different. So will we get some study material or like uh, any reading material for this entire course or will it, will it be only PPT? This is what I will be giving, but yes, I can suggest, I, I will go on supplying to you, madam. Okay, stay on, stay on, don't worry. Okay, I'm mean, gradually surprising you. And whenever I, I, I come across such, such case studies or any notification, any guideline, definitely I'll be sharing. That apart, if you have any specific requirement for any project, also please do approach me any point of time, okay? You are most welcome to the extent of my whatever stuff I have. I'd be very happy to share with you. Sure, Any sir. future plans for, plans for Scrum or DevOps uh, training in future? Scrum is related to uh, uh, Agile only somewhere. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This so, speak both, the yeah. Scrum speaks of your uh, uh, no, rather than the technical skill. It speaks of your uh, leadership skill. How exactly, you lead the project. Sir. Scrum. Exactly. So, so does the Agile principles. So yes. I just wanted to know any uh, future plan as of now of any more trainings regarding Scrum or DevOps? I don't know. <laughs> the government has to decide, ma'am. I'm yeah. always on the toes. I'll be, I'll be very pleased to be part of it. I, because yeah, practically yeah. I've been working on it. But to the extent of training that government has to decide. If they come so, out with the, maybe as I mentioned yesterday, that not limited to uh, this, uh, uh, we can say this version, but if they come out with the advanced version of PM, okay, definitely. Yeah, that yeah. would be it's, really helpful. Yeah, yeah. It's already the pipeline, as I indicated. Mm -hmm. Thanks. We don't know when that could be approved, but yes, I have every time with the government of India, wherever I attend a meeting, so I've been pushing for that because we need to go ahead with the times. Exactly. That's and what in these times, did. those are now hot qualities that people are looking into. Perfect. Sir, Thank sorry, uh, so one more question, last question. Yeah, Sajin, yeah. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, yesterday I had requested that, can you recommend any tools as the product manager should use common yeah. tools? Sure, sure, yeah, sure, Please. I'll come out with it, definitely. Yeah. Along with the material, I will definitely, I will try to send some, some, we can say, a proven softwares, okay, yeah, which please. are available in the market, yeah. Thank you, sir. I will do that. Uh, sir, a humble request, please, yeah, please, keep this, please keep this WhatsApp group alive. Are this up to you, sir? We are no, not we neither me or that. organizers. Okay, we are not going to close at all. There are okay. so many active okay. groups in the past. Uh, not more. If if not more, we have around fourteen to fifteen groups which are active, very much active. Our PM is concerned. Okay, can we collaborate all, with all of them? I mean, is it possible? Uh, let me check up. I don't know. Let me check up with the government because I, I I'm, I'm I'm not a moderator. I'm not I'm not the uh, I moderator for this. Yes, yes, but let we can always put forward. The, let me check out the But yeah. otherwise, at least let's 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 have a compactness of our group, right? There are a lot of Absolutely. things which we can do within the group also. Yes, it all yes. depends on you. From my side, definitely open. I'll be I'll be sharing a few things from time to time, but so as to Please. keep that uh, uh, group vibrant and active. It's all up to you because we have in our group a lot of learned people, a lot of uh, rich, enriched, and experienced people also. Let's, let's collaborate, let's have learning, because learning never ends. For me, for you also, learning Absolutely. is a continuous process. So let's keep it up. More I'm sure that we, all of us are looking forward for your uh, okay. valuable guidance. Yeah, yeah. And, always, uh, always at yeah. your disposal. Sir. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Thank you so much. Sir, and uh, one thing. Sir, uh, uh, one uh, thing. Yeah, the Panji. Sir, just wanted to know, uh, will you be uh, giving us the PPTs up to day six uh, that you have covered? Or or is there. I already shared, I suppose, I, that example also is there. If not, you will get our entire material today, today or tomorrow. In a day or so, all of you will get the entire material, some additional stuff also, what I feel, some samples, maybe some specimen of maybe a project charter or maybe business case, all of whatever I have, I'll be sending to uh, to you in the mail or WhatsApp, right? And, and uh, even uh, I, 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 I suppose you said uh, that you will be sharing some guidance from your side on PM block also, right? Yeah, I will do that. Yeah, please, Just do please that. remind me. Please do remind me. Definitely, I can yeah. do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Any further question, friends?
it's almost 9:24 so thank you so much for extra time though it is a holiday weekend okay so thanks for your like, interest your dedication okay your excitement to learn things okay so your zeal is still there i really appreciate keep it up okay thank All you sir thank from... you sir, thank you very much sir for your excellent training really thank appreciate you. sir thank you all the best from my end thank you yeah thank so you, i'll be sharing the study thank material you. to mail possibly to mail my only request if you can if you can give your very candid and open feedback also on the training okay thank yes, you so sir. much definitely thank you so much thank you if you're done you. with the questions if you have any question you can ask but if you are done with the question let's close and wrap up the session okay friends thank you so much. Enjoy your holiday weekend. Okay, all my best wishes to you. Your all future career, your advancement of career. Okay, your personal life, professional life, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Same to you, sir. And thank you, sir. It was a very nice session to begin.